Hello, and welcome to the Lincoln Cast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of June 15th, not May. I fucked it up the first time through. But this week, we're actually going to be doing a normal show. Uh, well, kind of normal. We're going to be doing a beta impressions, which if you're not familiar with how we do things, every time there's a beta, we do an impressions cast. So it can go for any amount of time. I'm not going to limit it. It could go for the normal one and a half hours, but it could go longer. But joining me this week is Nubarama. Yeah, I am. Rawson. Hi, how's it going? Duran. I already missed my necromancer. <laughs> and, She's so and, pretty. Uh, and now, usual guest. Uh, I'm happy to have him back. Uh, Shinboy630, how are you going? I don't sound shitty this week. Yay! Let's have a new mic. <laughs> Woo! All right, so just going around the table here, I just do the normal thing. How, what did you do this week? How, how, are, you, how are you going, Duran? <coughs> Sorry, I just uh, checked. <laughs> Oh, oh, so you um, well, <laughs> you, you cancer this week? I was how's doing well your... until that question. <laughs> yeah. Malaria. Wait, so how, how's, how's the family going? You, you, everyone, everything's going right, right over there, Duran? Yeah, actually, we're going to an amusement park tomorrow. That should be interesting. Oh, um, an amusement park. Uh, Worlds of Fun. It's a local one here in, in Missouri. Wait, so how old is he? He I'll be is sure to show up. Uh, not quite two years old. <laughs> oh. So Wait, we're going for probably all park? of about yeah. We're, so we're going to be there for probably all of about oh. two hours. Oh. oh, why would you take him to an amusement park if he can't make <laughs> memories yet? <laughs> <laughs> because his grandmother's paying for it, not me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good okay, point. Good. Wow. <laughs> Better do it while we can. <laughs> oh, you get pictures. That's like that's half the point of everything before right. five years old, right? Do you get pictures? Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, I, the kid yeah, can't I necessarily enjoy an amusement park at below two. Well, no, they actually yeah. have a whole like, kids section. Uh, there's actually a section oh, okay. in there that's, uh, uh, it was called Camp Snoopy before, but now it's still Snoopy, Aww. but it's something else. Like Camp so, yeah, David. they have a whole kids section. So <laughs> Nothing but we'll, teacup we'll rides. Stuff is. I used to work there, actually, <laughs> whenever I was a teenager, so, wow. uh, and I haven't been back since, so this will be real interesting. Well, okay. So do you get like, some sort of Terrible special memories. pass? Oh, hell no. <laughs> but most people you, that live in the city have worked there at some point in their life. Are you scared of like the in, the possible inevitability of you getting there and there being like one person who still works there, and you just look at them and shake your head and wonder what they do with their lives? Is that is as, that could that happen? Do you think as that far as happen? I know, a lot of the supervisors I think are actually still there, which is kind of sad. Oh man! Oh, there was one awesome. guy. There was one guy. He was kind of the the uh, manager over. I worked in the, the food section, and he was kind of the man, manager over that whole area. And oh, yeah. uh, he was way into uh, uh, Worlds of Fun. Is I don't remember if I said it earlier, but Worlds of Fun is the place I'm going. Uh, he was yeah. way into it. He started there as what they call a red tag, which is basically somebody who is 14 or 15 years old, um, and you you are only legally allowed to work at certain places, and there are very strict uh, rules you have to follow. Things you can and can't do. Uh, oh, yeah. But he started working there then, and Whoa. never left. And so he's a career theme parkist. Yeah, yeah. So, and last I heard, he actually like kind of took over more of like a director role at some point. And I think <laughs> okay, he's well, actually still well, there. At least he's moving again. up in the world. It's not like he's <laughs> yeah. staying as the red tag guy. For the he's moving up life. in the world of fun. <laughs> in, the, in the amusement park <laughs> world. <laughs> hey so, man, but it's you not even pick that. a world to move up in. That's do you think yeah, eventually? Yeah. Do you think eventually he might be a manager at the local Six Flags? Ooh, Ooh, that's fancy. across the ahead state. Of ourselves here. So yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, that's let's not talk crazy to talk now. I mean, <laughs> one step at a time. He's only in his like late thirties, early forties by now. So <laughs> oh, only Jesus. in his late thirties, early forties. <laughs> Jesus, you're gonna turn on the oh. TV. He's gonna be the new old guy for Six Flags. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you played this week, Duran? Uh, I've played a, a fair amount of Legend of Grimrock, actually. I've oh yeah, oh that's that, a good but, game. Um, I have a Minotaur in your party. Yeah, you do. Um, He's a fatty. Yeah. No, it's, uh, if anyone doesn't know, um, Durin's Twitch TV channel, so Twitch TV dot, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Durin. He's running a uh, nightly, or every couple of nights he goes, um, he's doing a Legend of Grimrock run. And uh, for the first episode, I was in the chat and I got him to make a character named after me. Um, he's awesome. He's a, he's a Minotaur. Or like your he carries name. skulls. Let him die and have permanent. <laughs> he's up to what, three skulls now? Yeah, three skulls. Yeah, he, he finally isn't dying every single fight anymore. Like oh, does. I think I've got. The, I've actually got the secret highest resists in the party. I didn't mention this. But <laughs> I've got plus fifty fire, like plus forty, and uh, lightning and cold. Well, and by, you know, I also have race. the best sword in the game too. 
Yeah, and have the best sword in the game, and have the highest protection in the game. So I'm actually the secret tank. Um, <laughs> I don't do too much damage, but I, I, I lost, outlast everyone else, except for the rogue in the back row. Anyway, um, so Legends of Grimrock, anything else? Uh, pretty much just I've played. A, I've I've been trying to get back into StarCraft Two, but it's hard because I'm also <laughs> trying to race Switch as well. Okay, um, which is been... wait, what, what, what is, what's your preferred? Uh, I've been we'll playing. It, I've been playing Protoss, but after seeing the Heart of the Swarm stuff from MLG um, and seeing the, the new units they're giving to the Protoss, I'm, I'm not liking that they're kind of doing this heavy focus on Stargate tech now. Okay, um, I, it's just not really my play style, and I'm really, really liking the return of the old Hydras and some of those new units they're giving to Zerg. So I'm, I'm it seems a lot like recycling from the original Starcraft. Like to some extent, yeah. Like definitely, the the swarm host seems like a right. an evolution of the lurker, um, and then of course you know Hydra is going back to their old style of just being fast as hell now. Um, and they, the, the, the new the Viper is basically kind of like the new Defiler, right? But better. Don't the Protoss basically have like an Arbiter and like a Corsair mix? Kind of, yeah. It, it's it doesn't have, have any direct attacks. Uh, okay, this, is, this went direct. way too deep. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Way too but, fast. Like, I own that, 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 that I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> that cloak isn't constant. It's actually something that costs energy and only lasts for like a minute. Hey, so we're back. Uh, I believe we just had some tef- technical difficulties there. We uh, left off at a particularly boring part of the conversation about StarCraft. And I'm going to move quickly a- on from Durin. StarCraft's not boring. <laughs> I can't believe a plane crashed guys. into your house. That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was like Donnie Darko. It came through the... the through the ceiling, and then I went back in time, and then I went forward in time, and then I went back in time again. It's, kind of a different order than he did it, but... The Protoss mothership was <laughs> mad it was getting removed from the game, so it just stormed into your No, house. it's actually still in. It's oh, not really? removed. Yeah, it's... Oh. We'll get into this. I, I, th- I, said, I said we're going to move on. We're going to move on <laughs> from the StarCraft. Show you how uh, much I follow StarCraft. But I'm like... <laughs> I like StarCraft, uh, and I've been wanting to get back into it, too. So, Rawson, how have you been going? What have you done, what have you done this week? How's your week been? Um, well, my a friend of mine and I, we decided to look into playing uh, Steel Beasts. Okay. Which is, for those of you who don't know, it's a, uh, it's a tank sim. It's a modern tank sim that unfortunately costs $100 to, to <sighs> get. God. So, we've been <laughs> playing... We've been playing the demo for that. We got a two week demo, <laughs> and uh, I've been wait. So what's special that. about it? Why does it cost a hundred dollars? Because it is it's a tank sim. Then and their primary client is military. That sounds oh, awesome. Oh right. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it's cra- it's for crazy people, is what you're saying? It's for crazy people, and and it comes with a USB dongle for copy. Wait, so okay. is this now, now the real question here is less sim than um than the warthog. Not no warthog. The, the, um, the, the, the real one. question is yeah, warthog. Does it, does it support track yeah, warthog, IR? Right? It does not support track IR, which is unfortunate because I have a track IR. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, you <laughs> are in deep. I am the secret life of Rawson. Support track IR. I'm rolling in deep. Uh, <laughs> as far as its simulation, um, there's a lot more units, but... <laughs> hey, man, you play armor. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck off. Anyway, there's a lot more There's a lot more playable units than, than, than DCS Warthog, obviously, because that's just one. But uh, as far as detail is concerned, there's less, like, overall detail, but it's it's still got basically what you need. It's a tank, and it works like a tank. So when do you guys think yes, we're going to get to a point where Sims no longer uh, can get away with having shitty graphics? Well, the thing about mm, Mill Sims never. is it's, it's not the experience of the graphics. It's definitely more like the procedure. and um, you know, Well, the, right, but there's other games and, that, that can be argued for then, as well. But at then, some point, would, they've had to evolutionize and actually try with graphics. I would, say, mm. I would say that the DCS series has pretty good graphics overall. I mean, y- you can go ahead and look at... Um, Look at like the terrain. At, at least like not zooming in all the way. Obviously, it's not meant to look good up close. But from like a from like a flight altitude, it looks good. And right. all the plane models, they look good. So that's like, what you need um, for flight simulator. I forgot which one. Not definitely not the newest one. F- FSX. Uh, yeah, it might have been X. Um, one guy. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Uh, Dead End Thrills. He like. Just pretty much just take screenshots, like oh, super, super right. crazy screenshots. And they put um, it on the gr- Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was using a program that like 
streamed in satellite imagery of wherever you were flying for flight wow. sim. So oh yeah, it looked the, awesome. The, it's amazing. The, you know, like, I, like I understand that, that the graphics are not uh, you know the central focus of the experience. I, I totally get that, but I feel like at some point they're using that as a crutch to just not have to worry about focusing right. on it. Like I, I would like to see sim games try a little harder at actually not only you know doing such an amazing job at simulating whatever it is they're simulating, but also having a an, um, a believable environment in which you it doesn't are all come down to this. Like, I want to move on from this topic, but doesn't it all come down to uh, budget in the end? Like sim games, uh, a lot of it does. Really I imagine, yeah. The thing is, also the yeah. scale of sim games is usually infinitely more larger compared to any other game yeah. in the market. Plus, plus, also you're, you're talking about essentially eating up another bit of resources and when you're making a simulation yeah you can add on you know some nice pretty looking normal maps on your tank inside the interior but that's not what people are going to buy it for they're not going to buy it for the pretty yeah. interior they're going to buy it for the realistic ballistic simulation yeah i, I guess i guess if we get to a, i guess if we get to a point like, where they realistic ballistic simulation is freaking easy but I, I, I'm, I'm an aeronautical engineer as a, as a, um, as a background. You, you can do that on fucking like calculator. Well, it's, it's, it's not so much, it's not so much the, the path of the thing as much as it's what happens when it hits the target. Yeah. Oh, well, damage modeling can be difficult. It depends how you. Mo- anyway, let's move oh, yeah. on. We can get, <laughs> we can really nerd out when it comes to this kind of stuff. We got what okay. three engineers here, and uh, and Endure at least knows something. But uh, anyway. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, the, you know some uh, th- dude. That's been two in a row. That's been really obscure niche games. I don't like you guys. Well, Starcraft, Starcraft is a niche. Starcraft is niche. an obscure, <laughs> but it is niche. God, I'll, 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 I'll call it niche. It's freaking PC strategy gamers is a niche audience nowadays. No, like, it I'm isn't. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that down. Yes, yeah, gonna throw that down and, wa- and drop the mic. Um, it, it, no, it's called Barcraft, <laughs> not Bar of Duty. <laughs> no one's going to a fucking bar to watch Halo get played professionally. I'm no, sorry. No, but to be no, but to be fair, they used to go there to play guitar, uh, guitar Hero. So I mean, hey, the Bar Hero. By the way, Cynic, the, the population of South Korea is over forty million. <laughs> That's not niche. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, God. All right, I take it. No, I don't take no, it. That's weird. New, New Barama, what you has never ever played uh, Starcraft. Been I, I have been playing. Uh, Arma two. Okay, so as uh, usual. I've been I've been playing that too. Um, do you play on the United Operations server by chance, noob? Uh, no, I just play with a couple of the giant bomb guys. Okay, well, sometime you should play on the United Ops server. With is me. it is it Ace? Yeah, it's it's Ace and Acre. Okay. Ace and Acre. Is the problem what is just, my what, you, what are you saying? Is um <laughs> it's ridiculously slow. So basically, I'm I'm having trouble running the game at the lowest settings in most. Oh cases. dear! All right, and yeah. and to give you an idea, to give you an idea, uh, cynic of what Acre is, uh, you you use a Teamspeak server, and when you talk on the Teamspeak server, it models that in Arma as if you, your player character, is talking. So you have to be within ear distance, and then it also oh, okay. on a, in addition awesome. to that, it simulates radio communications. Right. That sounds cool. That makes and sense. Ace, Ace is like more advanced Realism. ballistics and stuff like but that. But in the end, it's still a game for crazy people. Like, it's still, you guys are... I, I'm just shaking my head. What, I don't think I'm crazy. I've also been playing Victoria 2. I've been playing oh, Crusader God. Kings. Right, yeah, so Shin, Boy, Shin Boy saved me. <laughs> um, what have you been doing? Dark Siders and Bastion. Hey, there oh, we yeah. go! There we go. That's, that's that way more like. of a niche audience than... Goddamn. <laughs> so, so noob, I was playing Crusader Kings 2 as the oh. Duke of Northumberland. Oh, God, what's wrong what with you, you casual? Dark, dark Crusader Kings 2 is for casuals. You should be playing Hearts of Iron. What are you up to in Dark Side Edition, boy? Um, killing things. I don't know. Cloning nice. Zelda. Do you like it? Oh my God, that game is so I, I love Dark, dark Siders. So I think it's really fun. Is this, is this your um, second time through? Or is this your first time through? Uh, first time through. I'm just okay. playing through so I can play Dark Siders 2. Oh yeah. Well, we don't know. We're hoping that Dark Side two, 2 is as good as one, but yeah, one yeah. is a fantastic game. Yeah, yeah, I'm like four and a half hours in, so like oh, right nice. after, um, right after the first like big dungeon, where you fight oh, yeah. or whatever the hell his name is. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's such a good game. And then you have to game. go to that area, and then like you have to go through all those. Um, there's like the five or six like portal things that you have to clear out. Right. Right after that dungeon, that's that, the that, that big can drag. Can, yeah. can drag quite a bit. I did like but, two uh, or three of them, and I was just like, "Am I done with these?" I would say the good, like, more. larger portion of the middle of that game kind of drags. 
Yeah, I think once you get the guns, it starts going uphill again. I think. Oh, there's that's guns. what I remember. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Ooh. Dark side has got the horse yet. Cool. I, you, I, get the, you get the mount as well, which is freaking awesome. Yeah. Playing that Skyward Sword after Darksiders is a, probably a bad move for me <laughs> because I kind of was like, "Why did you just copy Darksiders, Nintendo?" <laughs> yeah, like you, you realize that like what you wanted this whole time was like a more mature Zelda game, and then once you got it, you realize that you don't want Zelda anymore. Yeah, oh, that's that's what I heard. No, that's, no, that's, that's, not, that's not what my that's not what my realization was. My realization was. It doesn't take you three and a half hours before shit actually happens in Darksiders. Well, that's what I mean. Like, like you, you wanted this this newer, fresher take on on Zelda, and then we got that with Darksiders. And after getting that and going back and realizing that Nintendo really hasn't stepped up their game with their with their mechanics of Zelda games in a long not even mechanics. Time. And I think Rosen's even coming down to like storytelling. Like Darksiders was oh, like yeah, straight totally. bolts to the wall action. Pretty much from the, the start. Game's so it, dumb. It, it didn't. It didn't waste my <laughs> fucking time. Like yeah. it. I. I did it. I think it was like. I think I tied it. It was like two and a half, maybe three and a half hours until I actually got into a fucking dungeon in Zelda. Wow. And before wow. that, it's all like you know. Hey, Link, press the A button to run. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Link. You <laughs> ran over towards me. Now hit the Z button to target. You, you hit the Z button. Like, did you, you have to herd cattle like, again? What? Did you have to herd cattle again like you did in uh, Twilight Princess? I, I... You do some stupid stuff involving... <laughs> that was like the worst <laughs> fucking thing in Twilight Princess. Was the it's, like One of the first things they had to do. Do you guys do. think they'll ever actually give Link a voice actor? Like For me, from a storytelling point, like I, it's one of I the things so. I have to draw the line in the sand for. Like, I just can't take the fact that they're still... You know... For most of the voice acting, I, in you, maybe it's because they're going while, into maybe it's it. because they're going into like HD systems now. But I feel like this next Zelda game, they have to. Like, I really think they're going to in this in, in uh, the, the Wii U one, whatever it is. It, it, it probably won't fly anymore to have it just be. Yeah, yeah, like at some point, like they've they've now reached the you know the rest of the world. The, the, they've hit the 21st century finally. Or um, or maybe. And, Hang on, maybe, maybe instead they'll just they'll just appropriate the sound effects from Animal Crossing. <laughs> meet us halfway. Uh, you know what? I take that. Maybe wait, maybe wait, okay. maybe mix so some the, simish the in there. Like um, Ico, I think it was, where they're speaking, but you can't understand what they're saying. Yeah, I still that's like if if they don't want Zelda to and and Link to be you know humanized to that extent, they want to keep them a fantasy kind of group of people. Uh, even that is better than their current solution. Oh, yeah, no, there you go. Just, have them speak the make up a language. language. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that they did that in those games. And Actually, didn't, hang on. Didn't they do that with, uh, what's her name, um, Midna in Twilight Princess? Um, yep. Yeah, oh, they cool. did that. She actually had speaking, like she actually spoke. It was just in okay. a different language. Nice. Well, yeah, so I, again, when, when, call me when that happens to Zelda, because at the moment I'm a Darksiders guy. And it, I've never it really did. played anything past the first Zelda, and I played the that NES on an airplane. One? I played that for ten hours on an airplane between Australia and India. Oh, that um, sounds that's, like the only, fun. that's the only time I played Zelda. It was good. It's just not Link as to good. The as... past is pretty good. Yeah, Can but Dark Side is where it's at Zelda, for me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Guild Wars. Um, so this week What's again, that game? A... oh yeah, wait, have I gone through everyone? I've, I've talked to well, everyone, right? What have you been doing? Oh, me. Um, I've been playing motherfucking Phoenix okay, Wright. I don't care. Let's talk about Guild Wars. So good. Phoenix Wright is amazing. <laughs> I object to that. Let's talk about Guild Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care. So, okay. yeah, this is the Impressions podcast. So what we're going to do is um, strap yourselves in. It's going to be a long day. We're just going to talk about what we did in your during the beta. Notes, ladies and gentlemen. Our favorite moments, uh, stuff like changes and if you notice them and uh, just... Uh, in the end, we're probably going to maybe get to news and talk about uh, what we think of how the game's progressing and uh, when we think it might be coming out. But we'll see if we get there. At the moment, we'll just start where we start and see where we go from there. So uh, who wants to start first? Uh, we're going to start with um, what did you guys do? I'm going to go around the table with this. Uh, Duran, what did you play? Um, mostly what I played was... I, 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 mostly what I played was what I, what I did on Friday before and during the uh, stream. I didn't get as much time in during the weekend as I wanted to. So it was okay. pretty much almost all World Beer World. Oh, right. And so you played your Necromancer for all of that as well? Yeah, I, I started a couple of new characters, um, ran with you guys on, on I think both the new characters that I made. 
um, but didn't really get super far into them. So it was pretty much just a necromancer for the most oh, part right. of the weekend. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, Rawson, what do you what do you play for the weekend? And uh, for for the I'm not telling you where. Uh, for the most part, I played uh, my mesmer. I also experimented a little bit with the necromancer. Um, okay. And yeah. you did, Jenny did PVE or World vs. World? I, I did I did uh, mostly PVE and World vs. World. for the Okay. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, and Noob? Well, I've just played PVE. Focus and completely you... on PVE. <laughs> that was the Guardian, right? Yes. And just to round it out so we can actually get into the discussion, uh, Shinboy, what did you play and where? Uh, I played my Thief and like I did some World v. World during the stream with a whole bunch of people from Guild, but the rest of the time was care bearing it up in pve <laughs> all right so we'll get back to the start of the list Duran, do you have any anything to share with us what would you how do you like world versus world this, was this your first time really into world versus world or oh no no i mean remember we that's where we um kind of started off was we did that yeah world but in, like, that was only like a four hour stint one. this was actually a proper oh yeah deep. yeah 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 this was yeah this was like once we all kind of learned how world versus world worked and everything and and rolled together as a group like this I, I could easily see that pretty much being most of my experience in this game at release. Well, yeah, same. Because we, what, spent... Well, I, I don't know about you, but I spent... We spent, out. like, all of Saturday, was it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, I'm trying to think of hours. Like, it would I forgot, be, I, for some reason, I forgot about that. That was actually where most of my time was spent, was Saturday <laughs> in World of the World. <laughs> like, last, last time, I, I think I spent 30 hours over the whole weekend... Uh, just playing the game. This time, I think I spent like twenty to twenty-five hours just in World vs. World. Um, Jesus, yeah, yeah. Wow, it was nuts. We played like eighteen hours of World vs. World. Uh, the Australian guys, so me and Tarkin, who isn't here today, um, on Saturday, our our Saturday night, Sunday morning till like three a.m. or something. Uh, yeah, and you called was... me crazy for playing a <laughs> uh, hundred-dollar tank stand. <laughs> Well, because see, for the people who who watched the live stream um, and saw that we basically had nothing to do in World vs. World because we owned everything, not too long after that, um, like later that evening, they reset World vs. World. Yeah. And we were getting apparently dumb. everybody on our server left and didn't come back <laughs> because suddenly we were just fighting to hold as much as we could to yeah. keep ourselves above the... Well, it was Bad twofold. Server. Like, um, well, I, I, I want to go into like my stories towards the end, but just to, just to give a preview, it was like uh, us versus Darkhaven a third because we're Yaxpen. We, we were in the Yaxpen server. Um, so Darkhaven was the the second matchup. The first time through, which is what you saw in the live stream, it was us versus two random small servers, and it was really imbalanced because like they just didn't have the participation levels that we did. So um, what Ana did was they they reset the servers around uh, eight o'clock of my time, so it'd be what around. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. the U.S. time, something like that. Um, so yeah. they they reset it such that uh, the, the the matchup was a bit more balanced. So we actually had a, a pretty a really tough fight. Like Darkhaven um, were very involved and very very into it. And I really, actually really respect them, even though we came second to them. Uh, I think they actually put up a really good fight for the majority of it. But we'll get to there later. I, I think we'll start with the jumping puzzle, like because we oh we. <laughs> we talked. We touched on it during the live stream, uh, but we kind of glossed over. I mean, and you were playing at the time, so you couldn't really give us a perspective. So I want you to tell me a tale. Tell me the tale of how, what we did and how you discovered and what you did in the jumping puzzle in the World vs. World. Okay. Well, I should probably preface this by saying that uh, when we did the, the jumping puzzle, it was it was uh, during kind of our our testing um, before the, the live event on Friday. So. Because of that, because of the time that we did that, we owned pretty much all of World vs. World. So when we did that that dungeon, uh, which is the jumping puzzle that Cynic's referring to, uh, we were pretty much uncontested. There were there weren't anybody uh, there, there weren't anybody else. <laughs> there wasn't anybody else in there from the uh, the other servers, so we didn't yeah. have to worry about that. Uh, just, however, just to give us like that didn't context. mean that people didn't kill people. Yeah, like, um. <laughs> so to give it, to just before we get there, so to give overall context, and I, think I touched on it last time, but I'll just go into it again for those who weren't here. Um, so there's a new dungeon in World vs. World. Uh, it's in the central map, so the one that's contested by all three sides, and it's linked to the three major keeps in that area. So there's an entrance in all three keeps to get to this underground area. Um, what it is, essentially, you, you walk in, and it's a gigantic cavern. Um, like, seriously, it, it, 
like if you've watched movies where a person walks into like through uh, through a cave and suddenly comes out into like a, mid- a magical island filled with wondrous monsters, like if you see movies like that, then it's sim- similar to that in the size and scope of the area when you finally walk into this world because it, it seriously seems like an entire map is it's oh, yeah, like absolutely. the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like what Cynic described, minus the monsters. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's but the cave of people, wonders. people are the more... Oh, the yeah, I was going to say, but you didn't need them because there were people. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> and so you get there via World well, vs. World, but it is a dungeon. It's not instanced, so we can confirm. Well, you can okay. get down there, and it's always it's, on. Yeah, it's not instanced, and, and, and I guess my misunderstanding of what instance meant was why right. I was confused about it before. Yeah. It is, it is behind map. an instance portal. Yeah, it's, it's behind um, a portal. It's, it's but there is only map. one instance of it. Exactly. Okay. So I was confused about yeah, that. Yeah, so that's how it ends up working. Like, So when people said it wasn't instanced, I was like, well, how is that going to work then with resetting? <laughs> and like, yeah. I, I, I didn't understand the, lo- the logistics of that. But after going in myself, it's like, okay, it is behind an instance loading screen, but there is a yeah. single instance of it. So everybody that goes through that loading screen all end up in, in the same area. Yeah. So start from your from um, what you felt when you first walk into the area and how we found it. I think we took it took us a while to find it. So start uh, from yeah, there we, and go we on. basically we basically noticed on the on the map that uh, every one of the keeps had like a um, I think it was a purple circle on, on the keep, and we, yeah, we kind of guessed okay like this, this must be that. where it's at. And I just kind of on on a whim when I was heading back after I'd, I had died to uh, defending a keep, I was like I'll, I'll, I'm nearby when I'll go down there and check it out. So I go in there and and hit the load screen come through it and again like there's just this massive massive cavern um that just like in in front of me there was this like purple crystal that was kind of on a pedestal and then further back behind that there was this much larger like back behind and way up there was this much larger purple crystal yeah and of course you know intrigue i had i immediately run up there and just hit the purple crystal um and it shines a light in a, in a direction and i again like just you know inferring that Clearly, they want they want me to go that direction, and so that began the jumping puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> like we kind of stood so there for a while. Uh, yeah, we did kind of stand there for a while. Like we weren't really sure. Um, I, I at one point had uh, I, I don't recall who it was that was with me at the it time. It was Tarkin. It was Tarkin. Tarkin. Okay, um, had them like stand there and hit the button because I thought maybe it, it was like on a timer and would raise yeah, something. And because so we, like, we when, did, you, we just when you hear a testing. dungeon, like when they said it was a dungeon, I, I expected like a classical dungeon where like you go down steps and there's like dark right, dingy. Right, right. And especially when yeah. they describe it as like a dungeon with like traps and, and things like that. that yeah, I thought it was like Legend of Grimrock. I think it would be like essentially a Guild Wars equivalent of Legend of Grimrock. Um, and, and you go down there and yeah. but instead, and it's, instead like, it's a complete it's like a, inversion of that. Yeah, instead it's, it's more of like a, a Guild Wars version of Super Meat Boy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> because oh, no. we, we, start, we started off the jumping puzzle and we realized after going through kind of the first hallway. Does it go to, 2D? If you, no, I wish. I would have made it easier. Does it show all the replays when you finally make it? Oh, again, I wish. That would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just crashed the server. It would crash the whole server. Is what so would be funny so in that first hallway, um, when you get to the very end of it, you realize it's just, it's just a dead end. Um, but... Partway through the hallway, there was a hole in the wall that you could go through. Yeah, so that like, then well, lead you we're on. standing there at the light beam, right? And then we're looking around and saying, okay, where's the steps? Like, where do we start the dungeon thing? How, how do we get this going? And we're looking around, and we can't see anything. Like, it's literally just, like, ruins all around us. Like, you're walking over, this like a... a, a uh, Kind of an like outcrop, right? And at the edge of that's the, the crystal, and it's pointing the, a light in one direction. So we're looking around, going, "Okay, so is there a button we have to press to like lower the stairs or something to start this dungeon?" But then we look around, and we see that's like hallway, like moving to the left, and that's what he means. Like we go down the hallway, and it ends in a dead end. Like it ends like this little bridge well, thing that drop that breaks off. off. Yeah, yeah. it's a drop off to like nothing, and we're like, okay, "How do we? Where does it start? Like, is this broken? Like, is this like a dynamic event that has to like trigger something?" And then yeah, we see that a hole in the wall. And during just like, I'll let you go on, but if you see a hole in the wall, just go. Yeah, so we, we see the hole in the wall, and so we, we decide, okay, this seems to lead to the path that looks like it would lead to where that light is shining, so let's go this way. So we jump across that, do a, a, you know, a couple more fairly easy jumps, and, yeah. and, that, and that's kind of the thing about this jumping puzzle slash dungeon place is it starts off pretty easy, and by the end... <laughs> I, I would love to know. I, I love, I'd love to see the numbers of how many people actually made it to the end of this thing. Oh, over I the hope course they release those. Yeah, definitely. Um, because I don't imagine it was a lot, especially once uh, World War World Combat became more heated. Oh, um, yeah. But so we make it across That's there, true. 
And then, like, that's basically kind of the end of the easy jumps. Because <laughs> like from the, there... Pretty much after about five jumps. Yeah, <laughs> so from, from there, you kind of go around a corner, and you're, you're walking along a real thin ledge. And eventually, I, if I recall correctly, unless I'm missing a couple things, th- th- there were some, some other things in the middle, but mostly it basically leads you to this well. And you're, yeah. you're at kind of what looks like the mid-ish point. Maybe and this whole maybe time, we're like, where's third? the dungeon? Like, is this starting? Like, are we even yeah, going the right yeah. way? It look, it feels as if you are breaking the game by exploiting edges, like, and ledges and stuff they've left in the environment. It didn't feel. It like wasn't you until were we hit, starting a dungeon. It wasn't until we hit the well that you really felt like, okay, this is clearly where they intended me to go because they had yeah. like wooden pathways that that you would have to jump to and that would lead you up the well. Exactly. Um, and it, it, yeah, it wasn't like a top of well looking down. It was like you walk in and then you look up and it turns out, hey, I'm actually in a well. It's, but you're also not at really the bottom either because you could fall out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so no. you, like I said, you're kind of somewhere in the bottom third of the well. And so basically you're just taking this jumping spiral all the way up the well to get to the very top. Yeah. And and once you get to the top of that, like you, you kind of already feel like you are just, you know, this amazing player because you just conquered the well and <laughs> oh, then yeah, you realize really that that is the first of a great many hardships <laughs> that you're going to come across throughout the course of this dungeon yeah um, it's like literally the easy stuff at the beginning yeah oh yeah the well was was nothing oh, i have so, a question about all of this oh, good this is like one instance of this area so in theory you could like have to do all this with other people like oh yeah PvP yes. exactly. you, yes. again we own the whole area so this is like, like optimal the only experience. reason yeah the only reason we got it as far as we did is because nobody else was in there yeah. yeah. Okay. So once like the game gets going, I don't know if anyone's going to be reaching the end of this. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't even know how we, how, how some of us <laughs> reach the end of it. Let alone. Yeah, so, so basically, from... like after you get up through the well, you you make a few more jumps, and and I'm kind of skipping through things because a, a lot of it is is kind of just blurs together. Uh, but there's a, <laughs> there's there's one point that got to be kind of the harder jumps where you kind of went down this pathway and you jumped onto this square pillar. And you jump from that to a second oh, square God. pillar, and then you jump oh, yeah. from so, that to right. Exactly. So when you get up the platform. well, right. Um, so to, just to, to rewind a little, like this entire time we were doing pretty well. So we didn't realize that at any point, if we'd failed a specific jump, you essentially get reset all the way back to the fucking start. Like up the well, like if you jump up the well, it's like a big circular jumping puzzle kind of get up. Uh, it's as if you're tracking like those stairs and ancient castles up like a, a tower, but inside a well with, with like a, with a wooden ramparts, right? wooden ramps. Um, but if you'd fallen down the middle, you essentially get reset all the way to the beginning and you have to go up some stairwells and then you have to jump your way back to the well. And the same kind of idea keeps reinforcing itself throughout the jumping puzzle. So when you get to the end of the well, you're on this like big stone, like a fl- like broken off flooring. It looks like a castle had collapsed and left the floor there, right? So you look around and there's like uh, a kind of a, a cave kind of looking thing with one side like open to the environment. Um, and at the end of that is little like a toppy up part. And then you turn right and again, it doesn't feel like you even should be able to do any of this. It doesn't yeah. even feel like a dungeon. Like, I had actually right, give you like instructions on, like, okay. Pillars there. Yeah, I had, like, give you instructions because you couldn't even see it. I was, like, I, I was, like, on the opposite side. I'm, like, okay, now keep running, keep running, keep running. <laughs> now stop. Now turn to your right. Now yeah, you should I'm be like, able to jump from what there. What do you mean turn to my right? Because it looks like the path keeps going upwards. And I look yeah. up, and you can't walk up there. And he goes, turn right. I'm, like, what? I turn around. And there's, like, collapsed pillars. Like, they look like a... Like straight up, there's these square versions of those Roman style huge pillars, right? But collapsed to my right, off this like really small like rock outcropping to even make that first jump to the first pillar. And I'm there, and I turn around, and there's spikes there. Well, and before you go any further, uh oh. Um, by the time he was there, I had moved on. Um, like I said, there's those two pillars, and then there's a platform that has like a like a couple of dragon heads on the platform. Yeah. From there, you make a couple more jumps. Um, probably about another like three three to five more jumps and you eventually end up on this platform where there are these chains that you can pull yeah and it turned out that each of those chains controlled different traps these were the traps that arena net was talking about and one of those traps uh controlled those spikes another trap or another uh, set of chains controlled uh the the dragon heads of breathing flames yeah they breathe flames into the entire platform Hang on, can, can I ask a question about this? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. What was at the end of it 
the, to make oh, this worth we'll, it. We'll, we'll, get it. We'll, get we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I it, right right now it sounds like it better be like the purple <laughs> dildo bat from Saints Row the Third. They just put that <laughs> into Guild Wars Two. Shinboy, what's your question? Uh, I definitely think what we should do. It's not really a question, more a suggestion. Is get like three quarters of the way into this thing next beta weekend and just camp there. Oh god! Just kill anyone that shows no, up. No, I agree. That <laughs> it happened to us. I found the. I, I know the perfect place to do that. I mean, we will oh, definitely get to you. that. But would like, would like say I was playing as a thief. Would like scorpion wire. Would you be able to like pull people off of ledges? Oh, um, that's a good question. I imagine so. Yeah, because that's a thing. That would like, be the well, ultimate. It, it might work because but because oh, everyone was on in inverted commas the same side. Like friendly fire wasn't on, so we couldn't tell at the time. Maybe you can. You probably could. Yeah. Um, that would be awesome. Just standing across the way, just scorpion oh, wire. It would be the biggest jerk move. And, and you know what else was awesome? Was when your guild members were f- finally getting like their third try at a jump, and you activate the spikes oh, yeah. to so, cripple so them. So I was there. So I was there standing <laughs> on, that, on that ledge, right? And there's a spikes on the um, on the pillar I had to jump to. And and Duran's like, what? huh, those weren't there before. So he turns around a corner, and he goes down like, this this weird path. He kind of disappears from my map for a bit. And then he like I hear him over mumble. He's like, oh... There's some traps here. So he turns on one, right? And Tarkin's behind me. And this gigantic motherfucking bowler comes down and, like, <laughs> squashes Tarkin. And I'm just, like, standing there on the outcrop. And he turns around. I just see him die. And he's like, whoops. <laughs> to be fair, before that, I did kill four <laughs> other people with the fire trap. Um, and, 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 um, and, did ha- and did have a guy call me a dick. Yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> So we're saying that I'm like, uh, don't do that again. And he turns around, and this this dude just the guy um, that again, called me a dick that I had server. killed <laughs> was <laughs> now in control of the spike trap, <laughs> just pulling the spike trap over and over again. And um, to to give it a perspective, like there's no like something we discovered doing doing during doing this was that there's no um, you don't there's no momentum really in Guild Wars Two, so you don't have to make a run to to start the jump. Like you, you can just kind of walk like shimmy over to the edge hit the jump button um, while pressing the direction you want to jump to and you essentially have full air control and like no you don't have to do any form of, like a uh, run up before the jump like, essentially that was boil it down to there but the problem is when you're crippled which is what those spike traps did it inhibits your ability to um, make that jump in the first place um, which makes sense yeah so we, we were staying there and and, and I, I I jumped up to this spike thing because and just to see how much damage it did while the the, the dickhead was still pulling that lever over and over again or pulling those chains over and over again and i try to make the second jump and i just fall and i die um <laughs> like immediately <laughs> insta give on the ground like it, it got to the point where we were like holy shit I, I, I didn't even realize that i was i was um being like at a, at a height where i could die because i'm a warrior so i have like twenty six thousand health and like heaps of armor but still i just got gibbed um so I'm like, uh, guys, can you uh, help me? Because I didn't want to reset the entire dungeon by respawning. So Tarkin makes the jump. The dickhead put, pulls the trap again. He tries to make the second jump. He dies as well. So we're seeing there two corpses at the bottom of this giant pillar. And we're just like, oh, my God. We, do have, we have to redo the whole thing. And then oh you were asking God. me to come down and raise you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell no. I finally made it up here. <laughs> Um, so subjugation, who was also with us at the time, like he he kind of caught up with us after we would be like, because like, all you hear on mumble, because everyone like half the girls on mumble, right? So all they'd be hearing is like, oh fuck, oh god damn it, oh my god, the spikes, that jackass, like stuff like that is what we'd be <laughs> shouting over mumble. And so uh, subjugation, so it c- comes up and he finds a stairwell that leads down from where the boulders start and where the first ledge to get to the first. Um, pillar starts and he comes down and he reses us like like a pro like like a g i'm calling out right now he's the biggest bro he totally reses us and so what this sets up is even though there's very many difficult jumping sections there's many resets until well for this first section anyway let's just say for the first section it's really easy to reset yourself to kind of where you left off wait Um, this is still the first section this yeah, is this is the just the first section. section. Oh god, the, th- this <laughs> oh, is the first set of traps that you come across. Damn. So the traps, the traps sig- to... signify the end of the section. Oh. Yeah, this is just to get to the Gosh, first. This story set of traps. is going to be an hour and a half. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the rest of this we'll go through a little bit quicker. But yeah, I just want to like set up the mindset, just the idea, the type of stuff. yeah, yeah, that you're kind of looking at. 
And then um, you had to beat Castlevania 3 inside <laughs> Guild Wars 2 and opened up a little tiny emulator. Try Dark Souls, but we'll get so to that. So after, as he said, a series of jumps, finally me and Tarkin get to the ledge. Uh, after we oh, tried right. like that and dying and getting rezzed and trying again, um, we finally get to the ledge with the traps on it. And then we start progressing deeper into the dungeon. Well, so specifically, during... the, the dickhead finally left. And so I took over control of the <laughs> spikes so that you guys could get across. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know, Durin. I, I think Dark souls would actually probably be a bit easier than this <laughs> than, and, than and, the next area and I, I beat in dark souls so let me just oh, yeah. you, put you, that you haven't now. heard yeah, nothing so, yet so the next area after you finally get through all of that um the first thing you see uh is there's a, there's a staircase leading down and just before the staircase there's a uh a, a basically a torch dispenser that you can grab yeah. your torch out of and, and you it wasn't need really that obvious. torch to turn it, was, out. it said like uh like be like light it was like it, was, it had a really weird name and you didn't really need realize that you, you kind of needed to grab something from there until you went about like halfway this, down the staircase yeah you got <laughs> <laughs> so let's set this up so we, we get to that uh well i died a bunch of times and during got there much before me but like uh so it, i assume this is how it was for him because it was like this for me you stand at the top of the stairs you see this like dispenser and you're like whatever i don't, I don't need anything i'm pretty good where i am i'm at full health whatever so i go down the stairs and halfway down the stairs it just goes dark. It just goes completely, Uh-oh. totally, and utterly pitch black. I could oh, not oh. fucking thing. And now welcome it's, to the entire next section. It, it's Tomb of the Giants from Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, so, we made so, it out of section one. So, yeah, we're out of <laughs> well, section one this now. This is section, oh, section, okay. section two. Section one was to get the first set of traps. Section two was uh, like more of second one, section one to get to a second sec- uh, set of traps. And the weird thing is to get to section three, it wasn't really particularly obvious. You had to kind of go like around this corner, around this like a, a couple of like, like fallen down walls and stuff. To get to this yeah. small yeah, that was, it was that, real weird the the jump. Yeah, to get to this like weird small jump to like a pillar in the middle of nowhere, and then you can, again you can look around, you can kind of see this this area that's a, like a, a ledge that you can get to that has these stairs on it. Which yeah, is kind it, of what, it, it again kind of felt like you know you were breaking the game. The whole yeah, it didn't feel cross. like you were going down a dungeon. It felt like you were just like exploiting things they've left in the environment. It was, yeah, it was a weird yeah. thing. But yeah, so, we'll skip so over to, the second section. Yeah, so here. go ahead and push this along. Um, so I grabbed the torch and and headed down there. I actually didn't hesitate at all. I saw the torch and I guess just the like gamer mindset clicked in. Like, <laughs> oh, I need to go grab that. So I grab right. it and run down. Um, and what we're met with at that point is probably the most devious section of the entire thing. Yeah. Um, because we weren't kidding when we said like it's it's utter blackness and welcome to the whole next section because yeah, there is no like, lighting in the entire section. There's none. Your, there's, there's your torch is none. your lighting. Um, and you are then jumping from square platform to square platform to outer darkness wall ledges in complete darkness the only way you can see it all and i and i actually found out you have to have your graphics set up to a certain um oh, extent wow. okay. in order to actually see the flame from your torch you could throw your torch and it would land somewhere oh yeah in, so in order to see is, that flame you actually have right. lighting from it you had to have yeah. your graphics up high enough exactly so you, you pick up the torches right and they replace your they replace your weapons and which is an interesting thing because this is a PvP dungeon and like how how is this going to work in the future? But anyway, so they replace your weapons, which means that you're walking down to the dungeon and you have two options: you have throw a torch at your feet and throw a torch like kind of like, it doesn't really aiming-ish. even give you an aiming yeah like where you're looking. It doesn't even give you an aiming ridicule. You kind of just have to like guess. Um, yeah. Good thing is you have infinite torches apparently, but. Straight up, the only way to light your path is to throw a torch at your feet so you can kind of get an idea of what's like in your general, like immediate vicinity. And then maybe you'll see the edge of a jumping like platform in the like the very edge of your vision because beyond that, it's just complete darkness. Yeah, so you have to yeah. throw another torch to that thing and try to aim it just right so your torch actually lands on it. It's actually more difficult than it should be. And then you la- the torch lands on that and lights the area around mm-hmm. there. And then you make the, the torches like stay there for a good while. So uh, it's about thirty seconds, bit, yeah. maybe yeah. forty seconds. Okay, not so long. it's not like Minecraft. Not sure. You just throw them everywhere and they stay there. But oh, the no. problem, the, the problem with it is <laughs> that'd be so is good. That, <laughs> is that even even with your graphics turned <laughs> up, the lighting that comes off of it isn't really that strong. It's just enough yeah. that you can, for a few seconds, see that there is something there. And uh, if you more can't so see what you're lighting for, without your graphics turned up, that's really fucked up. I didn't even know yeah. it was an issue. Yeah, because I had mine turned down um, because we were testing the stream, and I had to drop the graphics in order to, for the stream to run properly, and I was running it like medium settings. Right. Um, and the settings I had that, you know, one of those settings in there had, I guess, maybe the lighting set to low. And because of oh, that, wow. there was no lighting actually coming off of the torches. So the oh, only Jesus. indicator I had of where the torch was landing or what, or that there was something there at all is when you throw a torch, you also see like a white, like kind of a chalk outline 
of, right. of the, kind of the, the the area of its lighting, I guess. Wow. Um, okay. And so that's all I had to go by until I upped my graphics. Um, so oh, basically, man. moving moving along through this, so so you're you're making these jumps to these platforms, and eventually you come across a a, a longer platform along the wall that has these dragon heads. Oh that, God! It turned Jesus. out shot arrows. They were oh, they were just fuck. automatically triggered. We thought maybe some douchebag was on the other side triggering it, but it turned out they were automatic. Um, and not only do they shoot arrows, but the arrows do a knockback, which is just yeah. far enough to knock you off of it. Is yeah. there anything about this you're describing to me that I can't relate to Demon Souls and Dark Souls? <laughs> so, when, so once you get past that, which we learned, you basically have to roll dodge. through it. But you have to, yeah, you, have to roll. you have to roll through it at a specific time so that you are invulnerable to the first and second arrows. Yeah. Once you, you get, get past that, um, yeah, you'll get hit by the third. But you have to angle it so much so that, like, when you get hit by the third. You're it hit does by knock you it off closest to it, so that it doesn't knock you off exactly. Yeah, um, and hope that you were lucky because there were still some times where it did knock me off. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I'm pretty happy that they put one of those walls near the start of that darkness area because when we got to later and there's that that wall of death, the death wall, the piece of shit that, ki- that killed everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm happy they put that there because remember when you get knocked off a ledge, in any of this entire dungeon, if you miss a jump because everything's dark, or you get knocked off by those arrow things, you yeah, are in this area, the start of the darkness. Yeah, if you if you get, if you get yeah, exactly. If you get knocked off or fall off or miss a jump or whatever at any point, you restart at the beginning of the darkness area again. Um, so oh, when you get past, you eventually get past that first arrow part. You make a, a few more jumps, and and the jumps start getting smaller. It's not the big yeah. squares anymore. It's it's kind of slightly smaller things. Yeah. Um, and you eventually end up in the other room, and, and you kind of you get a couple of pathways, some of the easy jumps, and then that eventually leads you to the worst wall of all, Yeah, uh, which oh was basically God. that same arrow trap, but there were now three of them in a row. So nine arrow shooting things. And there was just enough space between each set that what we learned is you had to then dodge through the one set and then wait, dodge through yeah. the second set, and then it turned out, after I tested it, you don't want to dodge through the third set because there's yeah. nothing over there. <laughs> At the second set, you turn and there's actually a narrow path for you to jump onto. And those are the hardest jumps of all, of probably yeah. the entire thing. So, so uh, not only have there, you gone through all this darkness and all these difficult jumps and this ridiculous arrow wall and this second wall of death arrow wall with nine arrow traps, which you only need to trigger six. And it's not very like apparent when you first go through it. Yeah. But then After that, you're you jumping to, onto four by fours. Yeah, you, you, exactly. You're jumping onto like <laughs> things so narrow that you can over jump them by like half a character width. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And and then even like you're jumping from one onto another, and they're they're just real thin planks of, of wood. And then you actually have to make an angled jump from one That's, to another. When I failed that Ew. the first, the second time, I just quit. I quit the dun- I just left the dungeon. I was and, and, so and the worst part is that angled jump is the quit. last one of that section. After yeah. that, you, you walk through and you're now in, in the, the next section. And oh, the next God. one isn't nearly as bad. Uh, it has some annoying jumps in it. It's basically kind of a circular um, room, kind of a Coliseum-looking area. Um, and you're making some really weird jumps in there, but it's mostly <laughs> like weird angles. Uh, but we learned at the very end of that one, there's a really fun trap that you can uh, set off. And this is where we could totally camp if we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, because it's at the very top. You're completely safe where you are. Um, but what it does is it lets out a um, set of like three mobs. Uh, one of them, they're all level 82. Uh, one of them is a veteran. Um, oh and, and so basically anybody who misses a jump is going to land right down there on you know the Coliseum floor with all those mobs. Oh my God. That's, yeah, I, I, I never got fair. to this room. I never got to and, this room. And it was, I think, was it me and Tarkin that made it through? Uh, you and Axe got through the first. It was me and Axe, that's right. That's you, right yeah. you guys were probably so, the first people in the entire server to finish. So me and Axe were there at the top, and there was another set of guys that were about halfway up the room uh, when we let those animals out, <laughs> and we just saw them freeze, <laughs> and they just cursed us out over over chat, and they did yeah. not move again until the animals went away. Exactly, because if you eventually they do reset and they go back fine. in. God damn. Um, and then from there, the, the last set actually isn't isn't too terrible. There's there's a few more jumps. Uh, there's an, an, another trap that uh, or another. Uh, wall that i think shoots fire or something um but it's nothing too terrible and and from that point it's a few kind of weird jumps again but but seriously the worst thing of all is really just the the dark room that that is the most devious jumping puzzle i've ever seen in a video game i'm not a person to rage quit in games i'm (laughs) I'm not a person who looks at a problem and beats a head my head against it for about an hour and a half to two hours 
and gets almost to the end and then quits. Like I'm usually a person who goes, well, I've already spent this much time on it. I may as well keep going. But this was this just this just pushed me over the over the edge. It was it was the line that I did not cross, and I'm very <laughs> happy that I didn't. But apparently, for Durin, it was worth it in the end. What did you what did you get to in the end? There was when we finally got to the very end. There was just a massive, massive chest. I mean, this thing was <laughs> probably almost as tall as we were. Whoa. Um, did you and see any screen caps? I didn't see any screen caps of this. I didn't. I didn't even think. I, you know, honestly, like that, I, what I was going to get to <laughs> next is Aww. I don't even remember what oh. was in it. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't matter what was in the chest. All that mattered was I, I actually completed it. Oh, man. Yeah. Like I could I could have completed <gasps> it and there not been a chest and it would have been completely fucking worth it to me. <laughs> it would have been great if like. Especially all given the axe and I were the first ones there. It would have been great if all those in there was like three copper and a rusty dagger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I think we got some you like have to badges. Keep that rusty honor. dagger for the end when you find this like mystic pond oh that you God. put it in. It becomes Excalibur. No, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was no. I think you got like greens and stuff from. I remember the items being yeah, pretty I think good. We got, we got, yeah, wasn't... we got like a lot of stuff. Uh, we, like yeah. I said, we got some badges of honor, um, and then I think we did get some gold out of it, and we got a few a few items out of there, and it, it, it was. You know some some pretty decent stuff that you got out of it, so it's definitely. But it wasn't proportional. Like the the reason to do this entire thing was a if you hate yourself and you're a masochist, and b yeah. um, mm-hmm. if you if what, getting what? to getting to the end was its own <laughs> like reward. Like that was the point. Yo, um, I'm not buying that. That's BS. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Speaking it was, of, it was something. And I will never puzzles. do it again. There's You'll never do it again. I'm not gonna. I will never do it again. Atlantic. No, what am I saying? Not Atlantic. Niagara Falls. What? We, we missed what yeah, you said. Yeah, we're watching that in the background while you guys are rambling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's they're the watching sky some... crossing Niagara Falls by a tightrope. On a tightrope. Yeah, yeah they're, oh, wow. they're watching some boring stuff. I'm I... watching baby puppies. I was going to say, I'm watching what he's watching. I'm watching the baby puppies. Wow. Yeah, okay. Almost the full-grown puppies? <laughs> I, <laughs> these are baby puppies. Yeah, All these right. are baby ass I'm getting the, 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 the message here. So we're going to move on from the oh. WWW dungeon puzzle. Oh, one of them's um, waking up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll do a, a little segment on WWE. See, if I was itself. back home, we'd have these in a stew, and it'd be fucking delicious. No, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> the mic is picking oh, you God. up. That's bad. God damn it. So, no. Nubarama, no. what did you do over the over the well, weekend? Well, it starts with a P and it ends with an E, and it's not urine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say what. <laughs> yeah, um. So I I did a multitude of different mini dungeons. I attempted to do Asquon Catacombs, but I'll go into that later. So okay. the majority of my gameplay was um, invested in just running around, getting skill points, finally getting my elites. Um, okay. So basically, I was around level 20 when I started the beta. Got to level 35 by the end of the beta, and it was oh, so wow. fun. Um, so that's so like a good 20 to 30 hours, isn't it? Yeah. From 20 to 35? Yeah. Something like that. Oh, so, so wait, where, where did you spend most of your time? Was it was it uh, uh, the human area or? It was. It's probably the human area. There's this um, level twenty five to thirty five zone called Gendar oh, really? Plains. Yeah, in the human area. Yeah, that's where that I spent awesome. my time. To, uh, so it's the area just north of Lions Arch. You just leave Lions Arch. Oh right, yeah, I saw yeah. that on the map because I, I only got to Kessex Hills. I never got to uh, the okay. the higher. I, was, I think I only got to like level twenty six or something. Um, so um, I don't want to talk about more fucking jumping puzzles but um but did you do any but like you did some two right? there's quite a few in this game i, I was surprised yeah. that there were there's quite um, a few jumping puzzles. Around, i found one myself in cassock seals yeah the one on the waterfall yeah yeah which was nice one. it wasn't too difficult and there it wasn't was too one long. there's a skill quest with a jumping puzzle around a wall okay. and then finally there was another jumping puzzle in in but uh, this game isn't about dun- jumping so <laughs> it is it is <laughs> actually i like how they scatter those around like too bad everything's fucking useless from the oh god he's walking okay everything's useless from the jumping puzzle right but, um yeah um so there were two a mini dungeons i think you to skill points Pardon? i think i think a few of the jumping puzzles take you to skill points yeah they do. yeah and that those a lot of them end in chests um but again like a Depends whether you're into the whole jumping puzzle thing. Like I can see myself. It's like a fun distraction, <laughs> if anything. Yeah, like the problem was we did it as pretty much as soon as we started playing for the beta weekend, and we did probably the worst or hardest jumping puzzle available to us. Um, I hope it was the hardest. 
Oh god, I bet there's more. <laughs> I bet there's more difficult ones in like the end game of P- PVE, but like a lot of the jumping puzzles are pretty short. Like the one we talked about just then took us about two hours to three hours. I, I would um, love if that was if that was Guild Wars Two end game. It's like we don't have rating, we have <laughs> platforming. The yeah. fact that they called it a dungeon really scares me because if the other dungeons are like that, <laughs> oh my god, I'm just quitting now. I'll, I'll, I'll just see me. You'll see me in WVW. Fuck you, PVE. Fuck you. Um. No, so what what events did you do? Like, did you did you do anything fun? Did you like anything? Uh, well, anything there were two two mini dungeons. Well, one was smaller than the other in um in Guild Wars Two PVE. So there's right. one dungeon underwater in like some sort of ruined oh, cool. area underwater in the Char area, and oh, basically right. um it's like a level twenty five twenty eight zone or something like that. And basically, okay. it's like a ruined underwater temple, and there's a bunch of different puzzles you have to go through, fight under or the Flame Legion underwater, um, which doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> they're Flame Legion. They're the Flame, they're Legion. flame <laughs> Legion. But there's like cold torches that light up, blah, blah, blah. And there's this huge boss fight where three of us try to kill this champion boss, and we wiped, so I quit. And then I quit wow, out, okay. and then I went to bed, and then I woke up the next morning, and there's this other dungeon this, that's full of traps. Um, up north in Gindaran Fields. It's like a crypt. And basically okay. there were ooze, those, you know, like the prismatic ooze are right. in the original Guild Wars, basically like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically. Um, and there were a bunch of traps where people would instantly die whenever they walked. So are walk these jumpy puzzles up dungeons as well? Or are they, no, they these like are just traditional... dungeons. Yeah, these okay. are... There were, it was a really short one, and they, the chest at the end... It almost, seems like... Because um, Arena's used a couple of different terms, right? It seems like mini dungeon, like what we originally assumed uh, was well, a mini dungeon, the, inverted commas, it, it was, means... They, it was called a crypt. The area was called the crypt. Okay. And um, yeah. it, it was basically a crypt. It was very small. Um, okay. It's like a... It's, you run How long through traps. Um, first, it you need a like a four man group to do it. To be honest, because there's a champion right. spider at the end that you need to fight wow. and stuff like that, and it's a small puzzle. Like you need to destroy walls or something oh. like that. Okay. Um, it it was very short. Maybe I'd say fifteen minutes pop. Oh, okay, right. So, yeah. yeah, as I was saying, like, mini dungeons and inverted commas is apparently something that's quite frequent in PvE. Yeah. And I think the major difference between a mini dungeon and a normal dungeon is that you're completely not instanced. Yeah. So, like, you, you just yeah, you literally just running through wander it, into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, mini dungeons are just, like, sort of, like, special areas. Yeah, exactly. And, and you find oh, a lot yeah. of them of different I mean, types. There's a, yeah, there's something like that near, uh, in, in one of the beginning zones for Char. Right. Yeah. And then, wait, did, did, do you want to run us through what, you, what your experience with it was? Me? Yeah, sure. Norson, you, you brought it up. Oh. So. Um, well, nothing much, really. I mean, it was just basically there was one event and there were multiple bosses that you had to go through. And basically, I, I, I lucked out. So did it come up as a, a um, dynamic event in your map? The one I found didn't. Yeah, for um, me, it, I it don't was think, just I don't going. think it. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it was, but I could be wrong. Right? Because yeah, it's it's amazing how much content is actually hidden in Guild Wars Two. Like straight up, you, your your normal everyday dynamic events and your um, personal story and all that stuff is pretty well pointed out to you. You're walking through an area, a big orange circle appears in your map, and you go that direction, and you do an event. But um. It's amazing how much stuff, like, if you just, like, kind of go around a corner somewhere or you, like, look behind a waterfall in our case and stuff like that, that you find, like, a, a mini dungeon or, or, like, it's just crazy stuff just buried within the environment. It's a, it's kind of amazing um, and kind of scary at the same time. Like, if, if you're aiming for full completion, then, yeah, it's going to be quite a difficult task, I, I think, in Guild Wars 2. But, Noob. I'm totally um, going to do that. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, good luck. Good luck, um, mate. <laughs> one thing I encountered, especially with Underwater Dungeon, is that if people are too spread out and you, you don't get an actual group going, you're not going to be finding random people in these dungeons. You're going to be going at this with, like, too few people. That's what I ran into. There were only, like, four right. people, including one giant bomb guy. And um, right. we, we did not have enough manpower to defeat that boss. But okay, hoping... So- like so, you, yeah, was, yeah. It was, a cha- so was it a champion or was it actually it, it like was an champion. actual boss? It was a boss. Um, because sometimes bosses, like bosses, even though they're frequently called Champion X, like they they're generally quite different in that they usually have like multiple forms. Um, they they they, turn, they transform like halfway through the fight, and they have like weird area of, like environmental effects and stuff. Like, was it one of those bosses or was it just he a champion? fired like molten lava balls, but I don't know. That might be just a generic thing. But I never saw. Oh, that. cool. Yeah. 
Lava underwater. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> lava blobs. Anyways, so if you're going to go take a crack at some of these engines, I'd say you, you get people with you. Like, don't expect... Like, there were right. a lot of people running around, but they immediately wiped, and I'm like, oh, these people are fucking useless. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, you, you might want to get help on your own. That's what okay. I recommend. Um, can I complain about trade tiers or skill t- or utilities? We'll get we'll 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 get that as okay, a fine. part because like, we did last um, week. We did like a good fifteen minute rant right. on it last week, but uh, uh, I discovered we might talk even to it. more blasphemy. But I'll, I'll go into that later. Then, <laughs> uh, what else have I done? So I, w- I was just running around doing skill quests. There were quite a few broken things I ran across, like a broken okay. skill quest. But I guess they'll probably oh right, gotcha. Beta is beta. Um, what else? So, Athlon Catacombs. Hey, finally. Okay, cool. Like, I was okay, wondering where you're going to get to this. So it was, it's surprising how much you, you glossed over the rest. Did, did you find, did you like PV? Like, we'll, we'll get to Athlon Catacombs in a second, but did, did you like No, you I did? hate PV. That's why I played the entire beta, <laughs> because I hate PV. <laughs> so you did enjoy, like, did you find it yes. very, like, what about it did um, you right, like it, most? Because, um, after a while, like, because I was actually just trying to level so I can do Athlon Catacombs. Okay, like right. So you're kind of rushing. Um, yeah, so I was trying my best to level. So I was running across zones trying to do, um, what is it called? Like, level up. And then, what do you mean? Uh, oh, right, yeah. Just finding <laughs> dynamic events was mostly what I was trying to do. Um, right, and, and finding new like, areas. Did they GXP, lower the yeah. amount of dynamic events that happened in a map? Because for Gindar and Fields, it felt like dynamic events. I think they've kind of lowered the far. frequency of a lot of them, right, it which is a like good thing. Frequency. Yeah. Because I played in that zone too, and it didn't seem like they were happening that often. There was one in that small little town, I forgot what it was, where like the centaurs kept attacking yeah, at, yeah. like, like, every, like 10 minutes. Six waves. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like other than that, there was like none in that area. Wow, okay. Um, so, also, before I go to Ask on Catacombs, because that's going to take a big chunk of my section. Uh, no, it won't, but <laughs> I, I, I discovered my love for cooking in Guild Wars, and I decided to Aww. become a professional Guild Wars cook. <laughs> Um, within the greatest chef in all, I, I, I spent <laughs> one and a half gold on cooking, Whoa, so I boosted my okay. cooking level to a hundred and twenty something. Um, Holy crap! Basically, what I did was What's I the, spent, do we know is there's a maximum on these? Is there a maximum? Um, well, like going? the highest thing I saw was four hundred level cooking, like Whoa. ingredients for, for using ingredients. And you get XP for doing this stuff, right? Yes, right, I leveled get, up. Yeah, I leveled just... up really fast. Like I was so in, like engrossed in the cooking aspect because cooking is so fun. Um, so, wait, how does, I, so how does cooking work in Guild Wars Basically, too? it is, you can either buy ingredients or um, collect them yourself from either killing moas to get meat, picking up herbs from the ground, doing karma okay. quests and getting stuff from karma vendors, or you can just right. directly buy it off the Master Chef, but he only has a limited range of um, ingredients. Okay. So basically, and then so you collect all of the ingredients you need, and then you start cooking, right? And the I'm so what's sure. the interface I, like? Is it like right, the, uh, so the crafting? Basically, like, what does it look like? Um, cooking. I don't know about how crafting works, is but cooking, you discover new items by like randomly picking ingredients. Yeah, it's it's the same way because okay. I got up to like a hundred and ten, I think, as a jeweler. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So. So I was discovering so new yeah. things like pasta, and it's going to be so delicious. I'm starting. Oh, I think that's I'm starting awesome. up a private, <laughs> you know, a restaurant in the guild, and I'm supplying <laughs> the guild with goods. At like two gold. Oh, you sent me some pasta. Yeah, I, I, my my character people, was relatively unimpressed really by the pasta. Mean. Yeah, it was awesome. But oh, so I spent around. <laughs> it's it's quite expensive. Like it's an expensive. You should have used some squid yeah. ink in that pasta. Oh. Ugh. Wait, so, so what does it? What? So what does it work? Is there like four things that you put yeah, ingredients four into? Four things, like in... and and then it's like okay, well, you've discovered a new ingredient. And it doesn't work like, uh, so how, well, just to, to break it down for people listening, um, so crafting Guild Wars 2 is a thing. You pick two crafting professions when you walk into Guild Wars 2, but at the same time, you don't lose any progress on any professions that you've done if you switch professions. So, for example, you can do, like, uh, armor crafting for 20 levels, then we- weapon crafting for 20 levels, and then switch them both to cooking and jewelry, and you're keeping those 20 levels in your bank, but you- you're now leveling up two different skills. Right. Um I don't know what the real benefit is of having a limited crafting system if you're keeping all your XP anyway. Right, um, it's kind of useful because if, if I look at the guilds like listing, I can see who's good at cooking and who's good at crafting. That's so if me, I wanted by something, the way. I'm, people, I'm top cook interior. Top <laughs> I want to be the, the very top best cook. Interior. Like, that's nice. my mission, to become the bestest cook in all of Tyria. Well, um, 
but yeah, so essentially, once you've done that, um, you find these master chefs around the world who a sell you like rarer and then you um, duel them in the gym. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, and it, it's kind of cool that they sell you rare ingredients. I love the idea of there being rare ingredients in Guild Wars 2 for cooking. And right. they do the same thing for um like armor crafting obviously. Like you get rare metals and stuff, but I love the fact that they've done they've they've put in such like a complex and like a well thought interestingly thought out cooking mechanic in Guild Wars 2. Um, I'm going to make a a card piece made out of unobtainium as yeah. soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> to to reflect your real life status, right? Right. Uh, I'm rare so retainer. Right. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so just to, to, to reflect my LARP armor, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> All righty. Um, so, yeah, so you, you go into the cooking interface. I think you run up to like a pot. It's, that's that's the... Um, or like a crap, like a fire or something. It's something that's, really that's weird. Door. I don't remember any of it. Again, awesome. Um, like You are this great adventurer who's saving the world, but also a master chef. It's pretty no, awesome. The thing I is, love um, I'm sure, because the original Guild Wars, consumables, it's a booming industry. It's like a multi-trillion dollar industry in the original Guild Wars. But because there's no way, there's no real like generation of consumables in the original Guild Wars. Like, there's no like crafters in the original Guild Wars. Right. No, um, there. well, I made most of my money crafting on set. Well, you just sort of get the things and take yeah. it to a dude yeah. and trade them. Oh, right. So, yeah, it's like equivalent of a, a so, trading system. So, like, but here since, it's like, like all of these all benefits of the even work in PV or world versus world versus world, I'm right, assuming, yeah. like, the benefits are huge. Exactly. Like, so, what you do is when you complete a cooking thing, yeah, it gives you, like, for example, spaghetti in your inventory, and that's literally consumable. So, it lasts for, like, 10 minutes or whatever, and they give you a, a, a cons- constant single buff. I don't think you can stack multiple of them. I'm pretty oh, you sure can you can't. stack multiple if they're different, I believe. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there's, like, well, different subtypes. Well, yeah. Because, like, they had this in, in uh, Aeon, which, don't play that game. But anyway, I did cook <laughs> oh, God, in Aeon. Never, never play Aeon. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, you could have, like, a food and, like, a drink at, oh. at the same time. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cute. But so, they weren't yeah. were huge in bonuses. I think it was like only plus 10 toughness or something for 10 minutes, but still something. It's kind of cool. Yeah, um, it, it was... I'm it was assuming as you get higher level, on. the bonuses are obviously greater. Well, I hope, I hope they don't get yeah. too huge. Because even though it's interesting having like the idea of having like a world versus world team and a cooking team to like support them, like, right. it's, it sounds fun and hilarious, but I don't particularly want to have to do that so even though you enjoy cooking now i'm not going to like relegate you to that task if you're Why the not? only one i want to be the cooking god of all of here i want to be the ver- <laughs> i want to be like ash ketchum except cooking um but, but continuing on you don't want to cook your pokemon though that's right. a bad idea but the dogs so, look so, so delicious okay no so yeah um, you get xp for discovering right you get new like, recipes um, when i try to do cooking like when you first sign up it's like do you want to become a cook whatever they're like it is the most time-consuming and expensive out of all of the other crafting professions. Really? That's what they told me, yeah. When I, wow. When I tried to do it. Wait, so the NPC told you that? So basically, um, I spent a good 30 silver on ingredients, and then I Whoa. spent a good, and then a gold on a cooking outfit from the gem store. Um, <laughs> Wait, so was, what's the benefit of that? Uh, nothing. <laughs> it adds Okay, so you votes. spent 30 so silver cook on cook. cooking. <laughs> And then another, Version. I'm like, I got, I gotta have the cooking outfit if I'm gonna be a chef. And uh, wow, the aviators were cool, but that's not even God a cooking outfit, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, so, I, I, so I embarked on my cooking adventure. I'm hoping to, um, you know, spin off my franchise into multiple different branches across guilds. All right, but, um, we'll see. Do that later. So, so uh, just before we move on to Ascal and Catacombs, I really, I love the fact that we keep pushing this back because it's one of the more interesting things of today. But, um, Shinboy. You did jewel crafting. Was that? Did you do that this beta, or did you start that last beta? I started it last beta, got up to like sixty something, and right. then this beta I pushed it up to like one ten. Okay, yeah, suck it. So I did, did all that in one beta. <laughs> so did did you, <laughs> does it um do all the crafting ways work the same? Like you have masters, you buy materials from them, and then you can find them in the world as well, and you, the same kind of crafting uh, mechanics. Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Like you take like. You start to to realize what the recipes are like. To, I mean, like what you have to put in to discover a recipe. Right. Like, say you take your your starts out with copper, and you make like uh, a setting, and then like um, a band. You obviously, if you're going to take that band, a setting, and a gem, you're going to make a ring. Okay. Cool. So it's just a it's just a matter of taking all the gems and discovering the rings for those individual gems. Okay. 
That's that sounds pretty cool, actually. That sounds rather. Yeah. It's 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 kind of like overwhelming when you first look at it. Yeah. And if you actually like figure it out, it's really simple to figure out what goes together. And right. when you like the way it works is when you drag your first ingredient into like the thing where you add like the up to four ingredients. Right. It grays out whatever you can't um, mix with it. Yeah. Yeah. So like like the rest of like and the other crafting methods do this as well. So for example, if you're uh, making armor and you gra- and there's four slots in the crafting thing. So what you do is you fill any amount of those four slots over one, obviously, and it'll come up with um, the final item. So essentially you drop in the first item. So you, for example, if you put steel in there, the first slot of the four, then anything in your inventory that's also applicable to that crafting method. So for example, if you had copper in your inventory and you had uh, iron in your inventory, those these are level restricted. If they can't so you exist. need to be a certain yeah. level before you can invent or stuff. Exactly. Like some yeah. some items you can only start crafting with if you got into crafting a hundred, for example. Like, like it got it got to the point where I was like mixing things together, and it was like you can't do this until you're like crafting two hundred. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So like stuff like that comes into it. But essentially, at no point can you waste materials because it does only lets you put them into the pot, like the met- metaphorical pot, um, if you a can craft it and b those two materials actually mix it's kind of a cool system i, I like the fact that yeah. you can't waste and you and you can't like discover something again right obviously yeah no but once once you know it you know it like can you skip straight to recipes and craft from that method or do you always uh, have to yeah yeah obviously it? once once you discover it it gets added to a list which is all categorized like for me it was categorized <laughs> by like um, components like refining necklaces rings Oh, cool. All that, so you could like open and close all the drop-down menus and stuff. Right, and then you so you essentially use those as shortcuts to craft. You don't have to always drive, drag and drop. Uh, yeah, them. like you click on that, it shows you what you need, and if you have enough for something, it'll put in parentheses the number of them you can make with that. Oh, cool, nice. So say I made so say I made a certain amount of settings and a certain amount of like bands, mm-hmm. um, or like chains, and I had like three of the same type of gem. It would say like, okay, you can make three necklaces of this type. Oh wow, okay. And did you find that um, the stuff you were making was appropriate to your level? What, what did you yes, find about this? I stuff? was, I got to the point where I was making like um, green level thirty items when I was level like twenty seven. Okay, cool. That's that's. I'm not sure so, that's a good thing. A lot, of, thing. a lot of the stuff I made, a lot of the stuff I made was really useful. I was trying to give it away to people because I had no use for it. Oh right, that's cool. Yeah, like um, I was making things that had like you could put like up to plus twenty something precision on it or plus twenty something power. Wow, it was pretty good. Holy shit! Yeah, because uh, all right, to put things in perspective, um, th- there's your your character has uh, obviously armor and all that other stuff, but you also have a bunch of accessory slots. Um, so that includes something for your shoulders, so a cape, for example. Um, two things for your ears, uh, inverted commas. Like the the symbol is ears, but they can be stuff as like like jugs, things you carry around on your character. And two slots for rings. And I think there's a slot for an amulet. Wait, as well. I can get so, jewelry for my jugs. <laughs> yes, no, you, can, you can get jug jewelry for your jugs. It's pretty awesome. I mean, you saw my necromancer. I mean, yeah, man. She, she, took her panties. she was a pretty I took lady. a bunch of screenshots. I printed it out. I'm taping it on my pillow. <laughs> can Can you send me some of them? Yeah, it's pretty so hot. I'll send she you was some also from my also for like the... ten minutes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, can you... she look like more? So, so basically. So, th- so these jewels, they're yeah. are they basically like tassels? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So your character yes, has six are. slots awesome. for accessories, and um, <laughs> you, you essentially have to find them in the world, get them from the trading um, trading post, or uh, pretty much craft them. There's, there are very me. few ways of finding them. They're really actually the loot tables for them are very low. Like the, the probability is very low, so it's very difficult in general to find good jewelry and. Karma vendors usually only sell maybe one or two pieces of jewelry each, and you only really lock, unlock most of them by doing um, heart quests or renowned dynamic events or however they want to call them. Um, but so jewelry is actually a very rarefied thing it was to, and I, I actually find that people like you who do jewel crafting are probably going to be some of the most sought after people in Guild Wars Two. Fucking food's more important than jewelry, especially in, P- in structured jewelry. PvP. Like in a lot of cases, people are walking in because there's when you go into structured, you, you're max, you're set to level eighty, but the only way to get uh, like jewelry and stuff is by winning uh, tournaments and stuff and getting tournament rewards. Um, look, 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 noob, noob! I heard that, and I'll have you know that MMOs take place in a post in a post scarcity world. 
but good food. I'll become like the best chef. I'll be like the who's a good chef. I don't know. I don't follow chef. Uh, oh, God damn it. Uh, oh, who's that guy? Who's that cannibal? Who it's like Richard Muse or something who cut up like. Anyway, that. so yeah, it's it's kind of cool <laughs> that um, he is joke crafting is good. a thing. I I I I actually want to experiment. I'm probably gonna make my own characters uh, spec into jewel crafting as well because it is a whoa, rare whoa. thing. Don't encroach on my business. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to you for my jewels, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm gonna put myself out the way I want to customize that shit. But no. Um, okay, so we'll we'll, we'll rewind it back. Uh, that's that's a Army. little tip into um, crafting in Guild Wars Two. And uh, to be honest, like it is. It isn't too new a thing crafting MMOs. Like most people would probably, like, I, I want, I wanted to include this part, it's this segment because some people aren't used to it. But it, it, you'd find crafting is a is a thing in many places and isn't particularly new to Guild Wars Two. So even though the crafting methods of Guild Wars Two are pretty well fleshed out, and I think it, both of you liked crafting, the fact that you took it to level one hundred plus means you both enjoyed it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. So, so I made awesome stuff. So exactly, and so like, it is cool in Guild Wars too. But again, like it isn't going to be a core mechanic in that. You, in the end, you can always get stuff off the trading post from karma vendors or finding it in the world. You don't have well, to craft. It's, it's not new to Guild Wars too, no. But in a lot of other MMOs, it's pretty terrible. So it's nice to have an MMO that has a, a well thought out crafting system in it from the start. I, I the thought, thing that I, I like most places were really. From... Oh, go on, Shimmer. Oh. Okay. Well, the thing that I like, um, which like other MMOs that I've played, the crafting systems, like I was making useful items right away, as opposed to having to go through all these yeah. like really okay. bad items or work orders or whatever just to get my level up, just to make things that were semi useful. Well, and right. you didn't have an, you didn't have the idea of like trying to craft something and oh, sorry, you failed, everything's destroyed. <laughs> yeah. and, and that that's a really really popular thing, at least with Eastern MMOs, right? Uh, God, which, yeah. which are pretty much kind of, I mean. <laughs> When you look at the MMO market, most of them are Eastern MMOs. There's not a, really a ton of Western like MMOs, MMOs from days. Afghanistan. Shin, Shin, uh, you played Ion, right? Oh my god! Yes. You, you remember the two separate <laughs> bars? About Ion. Let's oh, over there. Oh, oh, yes, the two separate bars. bars. Hang, hang on. Yes, I know. Yeah. The failure and success bars. Yep. Yes, there were two separate oh, bars wow. when you were crafting an Ion. One for failure and one for success. And whichever one filled up the most, that determined the outcome. And, and, and really? occasionally, one of them would just randomly get a boost. Okay. Yeah, occasionally one will yeah. just randomly get a boost. <laughs> 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 so I take everything I'm not going to get into it, but it's awesome not nearly too. as bad as Final Fantasy XIV. That's all Holy I'll say. shit. Okay, so you, you guys both say that crafting is pretty cool in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Final yeah, Fantasy XIV said... has a crafting system? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, I'm honestly, is still surprised still alive? that yes. game actually existed. I think it's just a myth. People. It, okay, it I existed. need to grab the reins in this. I need to grab the reins in this conversation. Let's just move on. I'm crafting's so awesome. Give us to control try it out. It's not needed. You can live without crafting, but it's it's pretty cool. So new Barama. Visit my restaurant. Trust anything the whole time. <laughs> take take us to the Castle on Catacombs. Right, what were I your experience so with it? Tell, tell us a story rather than just bossy over it. So. so I got this group going. It was Tarkin, me, Sigs, and like um, two other randoms we picked up. Because right. like, it was a right, level thirty so dungeon, right? right? We're so there's two two like sections. There's the story mode, which is for level thirties. Or you can go okay. below level thirty, but it's recommended you're level thirty. <coughs> right. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Oh, for it's recommended for level thirty. God. <laughs> go on. Um, and there's the story, the or there's the explorable area again. mode, which is for level thirty fives and up. Um, and okay. and I attempted to do uh, story mode, so we got okay. we got. I'm like, all right, who wants to do Ascalon Catacombs? And then we got the highest levels in the guild to do Ascalon Catacombs. And then we're like, all right, let's let's find some uh, pickup groups. So two random guys, and so we called them over. We found them, uh, and then we're like, all right, let's do this. Because this is an instance dungeon. You kind of want to yeah, have to go in instance, with five right, people, right? Right. And then you right. you you get in there. Oh, he made it. Okay. Just saying, the tie rope guy, he made it. <laughs> uh, he had a safety harness on. Doesn't count. He did. Well, <laughs> yeah. Plus, also these puppies on my stream were just delicious. They just got done playing. Okay. Um, <laughs> they had a playtime and it was grand. And now they're starting Fuck to you fall guys. Back Fuck all you guys. Right. Trying to run a show here. Describe my great experiences. Shush. All right. So <laughs> we're like, wake up the puppies. <laughs> we're like excited, and we're we're going in, and then I spawned in alone, and then everyone else spawned in alone, and then it broke. Whoa! What? And then we're like, all right, let's do this again. And then we got in, and then two of the guys spawned in with me, but Tarkin and Siegs spawned in alone. And then we're like, let's do this again. 
and then everyone spawned alone again. And then we tried <laughs> for two hours. Holy shit. Work. God. And you would think that a fucking instance dungeon for five people would at least, you know, have everyone go in into the same instance. They're in the same party, but no, 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 you don't. So I didn't. So, so you guys were definitely in the same party and you tr- yep. and only one person started the initiator, right? Yep. Well, and you still just no, no, no. If couldn't you, get if, in for two w- hours. If one person starts it, the whole party doesn't go in. You have to really? go in yourself. Yep, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, that's standard instance stuff. Maybe that's where the screw up actually is. Yeah, because in, in structured PvP, um, only one person has to start the tournament, and all, all five uh, people it, are. They don't want. In a lot of them, it was like you enter and leave like individually. But how does it keep it? Okay, so apparently it's obviously having issues yeah. keeping people together using the system. Right. Like there were, like three of us would spawn together, but the other two would never spawn. And then like the most we can get in the instance is three, and it's clearly not a dungeon for three people. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, Arena. So, so in general, you just, just couldn't Piece get shit. Fuck you. Aslan Catacombs going. No, no. <laughs> I could not. So much anger. That was a bit of anger. <laughs> I wanted to play Aslan Catacombs. Gridlock oh, wow. was waiting for me to save, to find air, but I couldn't find her because the party would inform. God damn it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, happy. Air, air is probably dead now. So I was thinking of leveling to th- like hard leveling to thirty as fast as I could to do the dungeon with you guys, but apparently, oh, oh yeah, yeah same here. Like one of the guys idea. we were okay. playing with, guys. he was level forty-seven. What? I saw someone who was level fifty-one. Like, I took a screenshot, and he's like, the oh, only yeah, reason he that. joined our party was it's like he had nothing to do, like he was bored. <laughs> like I'm assuming wow. that guy has like what kind of life does he lead? Or well, go to level it's kind of cool yeah. because, and we'll go into this maybe. I'm not sure if we'll go into this too deeply, but the, the cool thing about it was too is. If you're going to a lower level area as a higher level character, for example, um, Fine, me yeah. and um, yeah, Tar- Tarkin and uh, Subjugation helped me out once or twice by um, heading to the level eight. Char- like I was in a level eight char zone as a level twenty two human, and they helped me out because I-, I was being scaled down to the area and-, and hit some tough spots. So not only was the case was I was way over level for the area, but being scaled down and still experienced an interesting hard experience. But also, I got full level twenty two gear as drops. And level 22, like, uh, kind of scaled quest rewards and dynamic event rewards from doing it. So it's actually a pretty cool system. Oh, see, I didn't realize that was the case. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was weird. Yeah, actually, I experienced like, that uh, playing with uh, some friends who were, like, level 3 or 4. And yeah. It's it's strange, and I hear a lot of, like, complaints about that system. What it's such that a idea. good system. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I, I know. Like, what is the complaint about? It's fun. The, apparently, like, the complaint is... The complaint that I, I heard was... Um, it, it was basically there was they thought that you know you would be able to hit max level by just doing level one content over and over again. Oh right. And yes, you can. The way the current system is, you if can you technically yourself. do that. <laughs> yeah, but but you, it's it it would be stupid to. Yeah. Like because... why would you do that? The karma vendors you're unlocking aren't as good as the ones at the end game. Like you're, like there's still there's stuff that are limiting you, but they're not the Wait, obvious. That level like, forty seven being... has really nice armor. I'll say that. Well, it's the same as like <laughs> you know, uh, Diablo three. You could probably hit max level going through, you know, normal, normal over, and over, over and over and over again. If you really, yeah. want, you could probably do it going through Act one normal over and over and over again. If you really wanted to spend the time, yeah, like that. That but this the, isn't that's not unique to this game. Is that uh, they're allowing you to play that way if you want to, because you will continue to get your level of quest rewards for the entire thing. So it's essentially coming back to the whole play the way you want to. Like, I, I don't know why this. Yeah, well, and, and the people about. that are having the people that are having the issue with this, I think, are are still stuck on the the standard MMO idea of of leveling and zones, and that doesn't apply to Guild Wars Two. Like, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. You can le- level oh. up to max level on quote unquote level one content. But that content is the same content regardless of what level you are. So it's not, it's not really level one content. It's still going to yeah. be difficult for you at a high exactly, level because you're going to be scaled down to level, level one when doing exactly. it. Exactly. Wait, so Rawson, I think you had something to say. Did you disagree with us? Do you, do you have a different perspective on the matter? No, I. I no, sorry, we're not Rawson. Shinboy, Shinboy, wrong person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that I like the system because okay, I, cool. as like a level twenty. Five ish Norn Thief. I went to the Char Starter area just to check it out. Right. And I killed two things and got two green drops. It was weird. Yeah, exactly. Like, you totally. So, 
the thing is, right, and just to break it down, just in case anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, um, so in Guild Wars 2, there's a pretty harsh level scaling system. And harsh is, is what I mean is, um, if a level 80 is going to a level 3 zone, he's going to be scaled down to level 3. Now, it doesn't work in reverse. Level, if a level 3 goes to level 80 so, zone, he doesn't get scaled up at all. Um, but you do have situations where... For example, um, a person in your guild is starting out the game, so or making a new character for the first time, but he wants to play with friends. And in other MMOs, you'd have a situation where if a level 88 person, a person whose only character is level 80, doesn't want to really start a new character with a new guy, um, goes to that area, he's just going to be freaking dominating, destroying everything there, right? He's not going to be challenged by the content. He's not going to be getting drops that he likes. He's, he's just pretty much wasting time. And the only reason he's there is to play with his friend. And his friend's not having a good enough, like particularly optimal experience because he's He's playing with someone who's essentially destroying everything for him. He's not doing any work himself, right? Um, in this system, because a high-level person can go to a low-level area and get scaled down but still get level-appropriate drops, it really, really helps the community, I think, of Guild Wars 2. Like, I found that yeah. the guild was, like, sticking together way more and like having way too much way more fun together because people were not only getting like seeing new content for example if i did a human area and my friend is just starting in norn i can go there with my level 22 human and see the norn area if for example I, if you hadn't done like me and done the norn area before you'd be seeing that for the first time with a new friend as your original characters and you're still getting loot and so on and so forth and, and progressing levels you actually get um the xp you get from not monsters, I don't think, but from the actual uh, event rewards and stuff like that is also being scaled. Finding new areas is scaled XP as well. So in many cases, you're actually significantly benefiting from going back and helping new players. Like it's an amazing system, I think. What, does anyone have anything else to add, like Duran? No, I mean pretty much, pretty much covered. It. I mean, when we, <laughs> I, I when can... we went and did the the Norn stuff, I mean, I being able to go in and see that story stuff. At the level that uh, you know that I was at, you know, obviously way over level the area, but I was able to still go and enjoy that that stuff. Yeah, with um, with another person, and yeah, exactly. Like being yeah. able to, like I'm, I'm I'm thinking of you know I, I'm still trying to convince, convince my wife that she totally would want to play this game, <laughs> and if she decides you know post launch that she wants to play it, yeah, it's not going to really be uh, that big of a deal for me to then go back and and play through her story stuff right along with her with whatever level my character is. Like we can exactly. still play together even with these level disparities. Yeah, it's it's, it's like a yeah, really happy was, system. Add something real quick. Go. Oh. Yeah. Um. Like one of those green drops that I got, which was what surprised me the most, was actually something significantly better than the gear I had. So I actually wow. went back, killed like a level three mob, and ended up getting a new piece of gear that I actually used. Yeah. When I was like in my twenties. And and that's not to say that the loot tables are skewed if you go back to a new area. Like you're still getting. No, no, it was just luck of the draw. Yeah, it was just luck of the draw. But um, yeah, you you get fully level appropriate gear. It's amazing. It's a fantastic system, and I hope that the people complaining about it just shut the hell up. Honestly, that's that's where I'm <laughs> coming at this from. It's, fuck you guys. No, it's awesome. <laughs> you don't, you don't understand. They're not going to be happy unless it's exactly like World of Warcraft. Oh man. But so wait, who are we talking? About? So we're talking about noob and Ascalon and catacombs. So after before going, so you, you end up never actually getting. Did did you? What was the highest level content you experienced, noob? Like if you couldn't uh, get into Ascalon, level thirty five content. And was there any like large dynamic events you got to experience, or was like was it a big letdown at the end? To be honest. Uh, well, honestly, I was just walking around trying to level for Ascalon catacombs, and they're like, "Nope, fuck you, Nuberama. You don't get to play." Ouch, Ascalon dude. Catacombs. Sucks. And I'm like. So I'm just I'm you know writing finding a list of developers so um I can send them a little present. Uh, oh god! All right. There. So did, was was <laughs> this an issue other people had? Like, did, did you check the forums and stuff to see if anyone else uh, found a hotfix or anything like that? Or I probably should have done that, but no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, you wait, tried there, to. There is official beta forums. Right. Yeah. Yes. I I didn't know that there were official beta. Wait, forums. Wait, are, are you being sarcastic? No, he's being sarcastic. Okay. I well, I I know that they exist. I just never fucking use them. Yeah, oh right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 <laughs> fair. Exactly. And, and most people don't, to be honest. Um, um, I feel like I was gonna say something really important about. Wait, I'm trying to think. I I did I did submit them a bug report. Yeah, I, I submitted <laughs> multiple bug reports. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, one of the Check bugs is in the mail for you. One guys. of the <laughs> bugs I submitted. Uh, let me go ahead and try to see if I can pull it up for you. Uh. Here we go. I, I filed it under PVE and other. This is other. not interesting radio. <laughs> my my subject my subject for the bug I was think it's about this to be interesting. 
my subject for the bug was this game is fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> body body is as follows. There is a game shattering bug in place where now now where no matter what I do, Guild Wars Two manages to be a fun and an enjoyable experience. <laughs> <laughs> For an MMORPG, this will obviously not do at all. <laughs> This bug can be replicated routinely by playing the game, wherein I find new, enjoyable things to do as I play. <laughs> Clearly, something must be wrong. I believe the game is missing tedious, dumb, unfun bullshit to drag it down. Uh, and I submitted that. Aww. That's a pretty good I really hope you get a response. Yeah. I'm not going to response, unfortunately. <laughs> That's disappointing. So we'll move on from Noob because it's a huge downer, man. That was a huge downer. Well, fuck I'm you, sorry. Net. Fuck you, too. I hate Depressing you, too. So, Rawson, what'd you do during the beta? What'd you play? Yeah, dude, you're not uh, even... You're, like, the most incognito person. You weren't even in our guild until... And then we just never saw you on. Because he has a second guild. Like, he has, like, yeah, other people. He was he just with. never online, for that matter. Like I was there. I he was, was online. On. I saw him online. Oh. Okay. But he wasn't, re- he wasn't representing us, so he had a little bar across his name. Loser. <laughs> anyway, so what did you do? Um, well, I mostly I, I'm kind of my main thing is I just want to I want to get to know the classes, uh, right? And so I can kind of pick which one I, I would want to play in, so in I, PVE I sense or a PVP sense. What like in a PVE context or a PVP context? Both, ideally. Okay. So, but, but you um, mainly play PVE, was it? Yeah, PVE and World be World. I'd, okay. I'd say probably more PDE, but whatever. Because you went there for um, our, our past, like l- last time we did a beta event, um, impressions cast. We kind of all uh, gave a general impression of what we played and how we liked the classes. So, what what do you? What was your first class, and what what classes did you play, and how how do you like them in general? Um, well, my first class that I played to any extent was elementalist. Okay. And this time, so you started I with the showstopper. Play... What you started with the showstopper? Not not really. Actually, really? I I enjoyed playing mesmer more. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what do you like and not like about Elementalist, for example? Um. Well, Elementalist is a very straightforward class, and that—that's basically that's largely my problem with okay. it. It's like I know what I'm going to get from from an Elementalist. With a Mesmer, though, I have so many like random weird tricks up my sleeve. It's basically a class if you're like me and you just want to be a douchebag to people. <laughs> You want to check out? Or you said you checked out the Necromancer too, right? I I played Necromancer for a little bit. I didn't really right. get a good feel of no, it. No, Necromancer like, definitely has that same feel as well with some of the weapons. They fixed the yeah, mesmer okay. from mesmers the original. Have a long Guild history Wars. of being dicks. Like what do you mesmer, mean they fixed the mesmer? The, because the hexes are, always made me so mad. I so remember good. I took my keyboard and smashed diversion. it on the floor uh, because I was trying to do a run. So and then good. Those fucking guards. Playing mesmer was, was one of the. My, my favorite experiences from the original Guild Wars because fucking with they people were the is the mo for the class. Like it, it's Diversioning a class about fucking someone's with infuse and ha is just. Uh... <laughs> oh, God, I hate you! I hate you, Sinek. <laughs> exactly, because exactly, it is the class for people who like to troll other players. Basically, yeah, but just troll within everyone. the context of the game, like it's, it's no, no. The best it's... trick for trolling is like in the original Guild Wars. You play a necromancer in random arena. And then use you you'd use aura of the lich and then kill yourself, and then kill your entire. <laughs> and then they'd be like, What's I was going to say that the best you? method for trolling people was probably uh, echo blackout. Oh my god! If anyone doesn't know how, what that means, is uh, blackout was a skill that literally disabled everything in your character and drained you of all adrenaline, um, which is one of the like, key warrior mechanics in the first Guild Wars. And you can use another skill called echo, so you have two blackouts on your skill bar. So you just walk up to people, blackout, and then blackout them again, and it was. 10 seconds of complete shutdown, uh, only possible if you're playing, I think, pretty much only possible. Well, what's the point of trolling people you're fighting against? The point is to troll people on your team. <laughs> so that, That's so, how so, the, or the lich work. Yeah, you go you go into RA as a monk, and everyone's like, yes, we got a monk. They don't realize <laughs> you're running all smite. <laughs> 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 so what do you, you like about Mesmer? What did you play? What weapons did you use as Mesmer, Rosen? Um, for the most part, I used uh, a staff in PvP because, for the for those you don't know, uh, the staff is primarily based around uh, giving conditions right. to to the enemy player, and which are basically the equivalent, I guess, of debuffs and and dots and things like that. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the catch all term for what you do. <clears throat> 
Anyway, uh, yeah, I mostly did a, that as the in PvP, which was awesome because basically I got to fuck with people and just wear them down, <laughs> and that was that was pretty much my strategy, and it right. worked beautifully. I very rarely died. Um, in PvE, I actually would start to use a, a great sword a bit, right. which was kind of interesting. Um, unlike what you would imagine, the great sword actually is ranged. Yeah, it's such a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, your your primary ability is literally to shoot purple lightning out of the sword. Yeah, it's, pre- it's it pretty cool. It does more cool. damage like the further you are from your target, yeah. which is pretty awesome. It's like, like a longbow. It's, it's pretty amazing. And there's other things like you can throw like an illusionary sword at people and it creates the little the little illusions and copies. Yeah, of you so what do you feel about the core cool. mechanic of the Mesmer? Because there's the Mesmer in Guild Wars 1 was a hex based class, and that was essentially a type of debuff in Guild Wars 1, which uh, was person targeted and usually quite powerful. But in Guild Wars 2, they've taken out like individual person targeting. So everything is essentially area of effects and stuff like that. But the way they made Mesmer work was um, in- instead of doing something particularly to another player, what they do is they essentially generate images of themselves, like ways to confuse other people within the context of the game. It's a really interesting system, but one I never really got. Work. It doesn't work. It totally works. Yeah, I... I didn't, oh, it totally I didn't, works. I didn't feel it was it was all that great. Well, it never confuses anyone. Thing. I mean, oh, it totally worked. No, you totally what? did. Yep. No, you I confused? found myself like attacking yeah. like um, copies in like World View World in like a big fight. I would yeah. totally find myself uh, fighting. Uh, like, well, um, eventually, did, eventually, didn't they, I... didn't they not yet fix the thing where uh, the mirrors don't have the uh, icon thing above their heads. Yeah, they don't say the class. Like, a right. person normally walking around in PvP, yeah. they have their class above their head. And the so Mesmer... You without that, you, the, you know that that's a copy. Yeah, but as Shinboy said, like, in larger fights in World vs. World, like, you just can't keep track of everything that's going on. And frequently... Yeah, you're mostly just tab-targeting at that point. Yeah, and fre- frequent Or just, like, mashing, clicking the middle of your screen and hitting your buttons. Um, well, no, again, you're not mashing your buttons. don't play World vs. World. You, you really do... Play World vs. World with skill. I'm not saying that. I'm saying targeting World vs. World can be a bit difficult because there's so many people on screen. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, you don't mash in Guild Wars 2. Don't mash. Anyway. Um, no. But the me- Mesmer's in, in large groups is a terrifying thing because like, they can literally just fill your shit with chaff. And not only that, but when you kill one of their, their illusions, frequently there's like subsequent effects. Like You can apply conditions that cripple... Uh, not cripple, like blind, stuff like that. that really oh, cripple is one of the conditions. Oh wow! Oh, <laughs> yeah, God. Full yeah. There, there's been there's been there's been times where uh, I used one of the staff skills, which is to drop like an AOE thing that does okay damage, but the most important thing it does is it just goes condition, 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 condition. Yeah. And someone's trying to run away, and I just plop that down right in their path, and <laughs> it's pretty much over. Wow. Yeah. This is, that, that was a uh, chaos something chaos chaos uh, storm chaos storm yeah it's a really good skill yeah. and if you fire through it with like a with a ranged weapon then the bullets are applied like a random condition to those as well i think not a random oh, i think cool. they actually set the condition now i think it replies a specific condition now but before it was like a random condition so you can pile on like a bajillion conditions and debuffs on people by firing through a chaos storm but um but yeah aside from that like instruction pvp uh I can't believe we're skipping three topics here, but it's oppressions cast, so get used to it. Um, instructions PvP. Wow, what a dick. Yeah, I know. Uh, if you try to <laughs> capture a point, and I, I was a solo warrior. like I generally played it as a solo rifle warrior. Um, surprised anyone who knows rifle warriors, but they're still pretty awesome in structured PvP. Like, they've nerfed them, but they're still amazing. Um, I would walk up to a point, I'd see this massive crowd in, on my minimap, of people walking my direction or if I like look around a corner I see this huge crowd of people coming towards me I'd freak out and leave right but like once or twice it was just like a mesmer rolling with its illusions it was like really cool to see that was like legitimately tricked by some people playing mesmer I, I thought I thought it was actually a pretty cool mechanic um what was it Shinboy did, did you play much in the way of mesmer uh, I played it a while ago. Like, I totally did not play it in the press beta. I don't know right. what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the only time I really played it. I messed around with it up to, like, level 8 okay, or so. Not cool. very far. Right. But, yeah, back to Rawson. So, you didn't like... So, do you say Elementalist, you'd say it was a bit too um, obvious and direct for you? Yeah, like I, I know exactly what I'm going to get from an elementalist. Right. And you probably know what you're going to get from an elementalist. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, like with, with a mesmer, with a mesmer, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of mixing stuff up, and cool. I like that. Nice. And, and so, you, so you generally played with the uh, great sword and stuff. Did you try the other weapons? Did you try like the uh, the sword? Oh yeah, I, I tried. I tried all the all right. the weapons. And those are the ones that, that you generally felt were more to your style of play. Yeah, like, this is kind of cool because I, I found that with warrior, people tend to gravitate towards very specific weapons. Um, actually, no. That's a lie. I'm, I'm thinking back to it because if you ask a warrior what he plays, you'd get some people say double swords, some people say double axes, some people say sword axe, some people sword and war horn, some people great swords, some people rifle. Like you literally have a situation where Guild Wars 2 has pretty much nailed the um, the weapon balance to such an extent that people actually are finding things that suit them, like how they want to play. I've, I, how, does it, what does anyone else think about the topic? Either that, or no one has figured out which one is most OP. Yet. Well, yeah, that. That's oh. also probably true. Way to bring me down. Way to bring me down. <laughs> <laughs> Just being a realist. <laughs> but yeah, at the moment, at least, it's a really fun dynamic where everyone's finding stuff for them. I, don't know, I, I haven't seen a Necro that doesn't use the staff. That's true. I think Necro's skills in general, and we, we touched on this last uh, broadcast, but um, yeah, I, I'm just not feeling... Like, I like Necro, not, don't get me wrong, but I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that the skill balance between weapons and between utility skills is quite there yet. I don't think they've found um, a way to f- make, for example, the daggers feel as awesome as the axe, if you want to play a melee uh, Necro. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, it's just, it's just things, the slight things missing in unbalanced in the Necro class, in my opinion. Um, but back to Rawson. So what do you actually play? What do you actually play this weekend? I, I just I thought I just told you. No, I mean I like what's what stuff? What stuff? Do you play? Oh, uh, basically I I took a, a charm mesmer up until from like level one to I think level twenty maybe was like by the time I finished. Okay, and that was that was a lot of fun. So um, mainly the char starting area, or did you did you switch between starting areas? I I mostly just did the char starting area. I went back to the human starting area to play with friends, which was fucking great but we've already been over why that's great <laughs> yeah so i'm not going to get into that um yeah and i i enjoyed it a lot and i also really enjoyed doing the world v world as part of the uh part of the live stream oh and yeah in there in there i also used the uh staff greatsword combo right as you mesmer um <clears throat> yeah but when i went back to my primary server sorry <laughs> but that's the way it is yeah uh I, my my roles were reversed in World v. World. I was no longer the server that was top dog. I right. Was one of the smaller ones. And that is not as fun. So, because wait. Because when we start talking about World v. World, this podcast is going to be pretty much World v. World for the rest of it. Do you want to start that now? We probably we probably should look into a bit no, more into PvP. PvP. Yet. Yeah, we, should, we go a bit more into I... PvP before jumping into World v. World. Because I okay, think we all, all play World v. World, so... Um, but uh, what, what did you most like? What, what parts of the char starting area did you really find fun? What, what do you see anything that you really liked? Um, just, just a lot of like, just a lot of like the overall aesthetic. I really enjoy. Oh, really? Um, okay. Uh, some I, of the, I can't really. Some of the events were pretty interesting. Like, there's one that involves uh, defending like some mortar emplacements from harpies, and another one that involves. Uh, like a influx of earth golems uh, getting up near a near <laughs> a graveyard. That That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I think there was one um, when I was tra- traversing through there with my human because the star starting at Charlie area is like really huge. It, it goes like oh, yeah, from the city west, like a good no, sorry, east about like a good twenty minutes walk just from the city and, to the edge of their area. It's kind of nuts. And, and I cleared and I cleared out the uh, the Ascalon wall of harpies. Oh man, it's part of it. <laughs> Everything to do with Ascalon in the Char starting area just got my just got my veins. Ah, oh. I, I was I was essentially having the it's equivalent like, oh. of a heart on. I had the equivalent you're, of a heart on. You're the on bad the guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm killing the good guys. I'm killing ghosts of the good guys. Um, yeah, and and the, the way they executed the Great Northern War, I think it is, uh, which is running on the top of that area, uh, with the different lighting effects and like how everything goes suddenly like, gloomy, and like, you can see the 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 ruins of the Great Northern War and the ruins of Ascalon City and stuff. Like that. It's absolutely spectacular in the Char starting area. I, 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 I went into it not liking the Char starting area too much because I don't really like the whole brown metal grungy kind of uh, aesthetic, but the, it does really vary up as you as you walk around and the under. Air, 
Pirate Water area is actually pretty spectacular. What, what are your thoughts about the actual area itself? For us? Did you play much of the Star Char Star area last beta, or this is your first time in the Char Star area? Uh, this is really my first time actually getting into it. Uh, it's like I said, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the aesthetic. I'd probably say the human starting area is more pretty. Yeah, well, that's, but, that's, that's without a doubt, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I can't I can't really say whether or not I think it's like more fun. Right. Now, I'll say something about the char areas. Like I hated the char starter area. Really. But okay. I loved the char second area. Wow. Okay. Like the I, I never got twenty five. I thought there. it was great. Cool. I thought it was great. The the events there were interesting. It looked cool. I don't know. I enjoyed it a lot so more. What than did the you not one. like about the um, char starting area? I think noobs talking to his parents. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I didn't think anything in there was like overly interesting. Okay. Like, uh, event wise, there were some cool things happening there because um, for some areas, the like a tower starting area did this more than other areas, in my opinion. Like obviously, there's areas in the human starting area where um, a a waypoint would be contested in a town because it kept getting attacked by centaurs. That happened quite a lot. Yeah. But in the char starting area, I, I felt that they did it a little bit more naturally and dynamically. Um, like, for example, there's a waypoint in the far eastern side of the char starting area. I forgot what its name is, but it gets attacked by, like, these giants. They're not Ettons, but, like, giant-y kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be an actual event chain. And the event chain isn't just, hey, they're attacking this area. Hey, it's being contested. Maybe you want to walk 10 minutes to get there and maybe help them out. It's more like um, it's a slow degradation of there's this outpost in the middle of nowhere and there's this another like a base camp of of uh, these giants. And there'd be like a middle, a, a quest, or sorry, an event which is more like the relations are getting a bit strained. So they've started like making small raids, making small in routes to where you are. Um, and eventually it gets to the point where the you get overrun by them that they, they decide to make a full-scale assault on you and the closest waypoints are as i said about five to ten minutes walk away so there'd be like a large multi-stage assault and pushback over that that point and i felt it was far better done in the char starting area with those giants than it ever was in the human starting area with the centaurs i think i thought the centaur thing in the human starting area was absolute bs until you get to around keswick hills <laughs> Kessex Hills was awesome, um, and, and I'll get there when I do my impressions, but like, I, I found the, the some parts of the Charles starting area a bit boring, like stuff like um, helping them out with their little like um, pickup quests, like you, you go to a heart quest and all this, yeah. like, picking up shells and stuff and bringing them back to camp, like that kind of stuff was a bit boring. Um, Rawson, did you, did you do too much in the way of the uh, Renown quests in, sorry, Renown events in the Charles starting area? No, not really. Okay, sorry. So you generally did like the dynamic events instead, right? Yeah. And you did the right way. In my opinion, that's probably why you have such a positive um, review of the char starting area because a lot of those uh, renowned quests are a bit repetitive and boring, in my opinion. Yeah, because I like doing the renowned quests just to see what the uh, the vendor has. Yeah. So that's mostly what I did. Exactly. And they kind of like down, it's a pretty much a huge down on the entire area because, again, yeah, a lot of those like fetch quests or just like hold this point against a, like a. a, a, a uh, constant assault by enemies stuff like that which is fun i guess but when you've done it so many times in the human area and the norn area doing it again the char area kind of gets a bit grating but i find a lot of the dynamic events pretty awesome in the char starting area um yeah i, I like the ones in the second area right because so rawson did you get to the second area we'll, we'll get to shinboy in a second but did you get to the no second no area? actually i didn't get uh, i didn't get to go to the second area okay. um for the most part, like my playstyle for the betas seems to be basically just let it go, just let myself go with it, just right. let everything flow as it as I feel like it. And for the most part, that's how that's how it works out, and that seems to be working out great. Cool. Because I don't I don't care enough to to level up in the most efficient way possible <laughs> for a beta where my character yeah, exactly. is going to be wiped. wiped anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I well, for the most part, in MMOs, I don't give a shit about that <laughs> right so we'll, we'll move on then shin boy because we'll do well this as well at the end um what did you do this this beta did you have fun what did you play uh yeah i played a thief or the thief that i'm uh was continuing from the last weekend this right. was like last beta weekend i just sort of you know just did whatever just trying to see what everything was you know first time playing a game yeah. you're trying to figure yeah. out all the different systems this weekend i was like you know what I'm gonna play this as if the game's already out, and I'm just gonna like hardcore. Ooh, that's as dangerous. If I was actually playing. That's dangerous. Just to see what it's like. <laughs> if like, 
uh, see if I would actually enjoy it because you know I was like okay getting all of this magic of discovery out of the window I'm going to sit down and play this game and that's the, that's the, the dangerous yeah. part which I was referring to it's not that the game would not meet expectations it's that it totally meets expectations and you totally get drawn in like I lost a day of my weekend by doing what you just said to do um yeah like I was surprised like I actually went in saying like okay I'm going to play this as if this game is out and I'm playing instead of just seeing how everything works yeah. for the first time and I still ended up just wandering around yeah just finding things to do exactly like um me and someone else from guild uh I don't know don't have a screenshot of it to see who it was but we were in the char second area which I enjoyed so much so and, wait, um, so is it the for char or was it a different race no, no, Norn. Okay, so you, um, you're I, checking out I, a new area. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a fan of the Norn second area, so I went to the. I actually one, I I agree with you. I, I think one. the Norn second area is a bit, yeah, a bit boring. It's like all the same. Yeah. I don't know. It's like the Char first yeah. area. <laughs> so you know, one thing I, I'm, yeah, I'm noticing about this game, I, I, I didn't realize I missed until I had it, is um, the ability to, you know say like i don't really like this area so i'm gonna go over to this other area and quest here instead oh yeah that's been missing from so many recent mmos they're, they're so linear these days yeah there's there's this one path and that's that's where you must go if you are within this level range i if totally like forgot the tough shit. thing i totally forgot this that is the level 15 to level 25 planet you will go to the level 15 yeah. to 25 planet <laughs> you will hit not calling out any names of mmos quest, or anything a quest will tell you then to go to the level 25 to 40 planet Oh, then wow. proceed to level twenty five to forty planet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, totally, I totally forgot this is a thing. Kill so yourself in Guild Wars two, right? <laughs> um, so you start in your normal starting area for your class and your race. Sorry, so you start in Norn. You're in the Norn starting area. You generally stick to that for a couple of levels, um, just to like uh, to familiarize familiarize yourself with the game. But then you realize that if you hit the map button, there's a uh, outpost called Lion's Arch. I'm not sure if this will be available in the, when the actual game comes out. I don't know if this is the case, but if you go to Holbrek or any major starting city, there's a Asura teleporter there that takes you to Lion's Arch. And when you get there, you can actually use another teleporter because there's a, a circle of teleporters right next to each other in the, in the city to get to any of the other starting areas. I imagine that will be in the game because that, that's really the only way to so. get to those other zones. Yeah. No, you can straight up walk to them. Well, I mean, I you can, the yeah. But I'm thinking like, our area. if you're wanting to go from second area of human to the second area of the Norn, that's the only realistic way to do it is to use those portals. You're not really yeah, ones yeah, that aren't linked by landmass. Yeah. Um, because between human and Norn, you have all the Lion's Arch area from memory, I think. I think. Well, and not just that, but I'm thinking like you know having to go through zones that are clearly above your level in order to get there. Yeah. So this makes this makes it much easier, and I imagine so I hope they leave it in the game. That, that, yeah. Bring it back to it. Like it's amazing because you can straight up go as they said. Um, hey, I've I've done a couple of levels for this area. Let's have a look at what the other starting areas are, and just hit Lion's Arch, teleport to the next major city, and straight up quest as if you would normally and do dynamic events and all other stuff like it's it's a really cool concept and i didn't even realize when doing it because it felt so natural this is pretty new to mmos like for, for example rosin what, what's your experience from i think you were pulling examples from star wars was it oh uh, yeah specifically star wars the whole planet thing but you know I never bought Star Wars The Old Republic. I played the beta. I thought it was fucking garbage. But enough of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was. It was fucking garbage. All right. uh, I agree. But, I did the same thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I've also, I also played Ion, and that was also fucking garbage. That game's awesome. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It wasn't. <laughs> um, but it, it did the similar thing with the whole, like, you know, here is your one zone. This is where you get to go. Yeah. Right. And if you, and, and if I can you want to do the thing... Yeah, and if I can you want to do anything else, fuck off. <laughs> and I can confirm as somebody who pretty much buys every major MMO that releases, they're all that way. Wow, okay. The last game, that, yeah. the last MMO that I played where you actually had real choice of which zone you wanted to play in um, was probably WoW. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. That's the, that's the saddest thing. Yeah. Wait, so so does WoW have a similar... I, I, I hate to, to do this because, I, I again, I appear to be the MMO noob here, but uh, I only played a couple of hours of WoW, and I was just the starting area, I think it in, was. In, in WoW, it's, 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 it's kind of similar to that, where like if you are, say, playing as like, a, a Night Elf, there is kind of a, 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 a path that that quest takes you through. Right. Um, but those zones don't really come into um, the other ones for quite a while, same as if you're playing as a human. You're going to be starting off in Elwyn Forest and moving out from there to... Westfall and moving from there and so forth. 
But like, if I was playing as say a um, dwarf and the dwarf starting area is fucking terrible, <laughs> I could just go and run. And granted, it's harder. There, there, there aren't the portals that there are in, in Guild Wars Two. Oh right. Okay. Um, but I could, I could run myself to one of the other starting zones and, and go fight there instead. If I, if I so, really how do to. you feel about the easiness and like how it works in Guild Wars Two to get between starting areas, doing? As somebody who tends to not like uh, MMOs with loading screens and instances and stuff, um, I am surprisingly okay of how it's done because the the world is kind of broken up. I mean, you can run from one place to another, but there are definitely some um, some places that you could only really reach through a loading screen, it seems like. Right. Um, but the way the game handles it is is still okay because the, the majority of the world really is kind of there. It is It is open. You don't... There isn't a load screen from, uh, you know, the the first area at right outside Divinity's Reach to Keswick Hills, for instance. Like it's all one big one one is big landmass. I think there's a loading. While area. we're on the topic of load no, screens, no, there's not a loading area. While we're on the topic of load screens, am I the only one that's really upset they took the progress bar out of the loading screen? Yes. No. Yeah. Sorry, you're not the yeah. only one who's upset yeah, yeah, of that. I agree. Oh, it doesn't tell me how long it's been loading. It's Okay. Circle <laughs> exactly. going round and round. Yeah, it's just a circle going round and round and just sitting there. It's just like, another wait, fuck you experience from arena net. Uh, loading, area, loading zones being longer this time through? I yes, like, they were. Yeah, the game uh, was They faster. also said on Twitter that people were uh, hanging on loading screens a lot. Yeah, because the, the oh, game okay. ran better, but I found that I loaded areas for longer. Those could be directly correlating. Like, they could just be could putting be, one yeah. RAM or whatever it is. But, uh, yeah, it's weird. But, yes, aside from that, the loading screens are pretty, and we'll get back to the point here. Wow, you can get between <laughs> starting areas from any uh, really easily as, as any uh, uh, character. You can experience all the starting areas and have fun because of that level scaling thing. You'll still be leveling up. You'll still be getting XP and loot for your character and appropriate to your current actual level. But you can be experiencing lower level content being scaled down. It's it's a pretty amazing system and one that pretty much it reinforces, as I said earlier that you can choose how you want to play. So back to... Yeah, not just not just starter areas, like all level ranges. Exactly, too. yeah. Like I was yeah. like, I found I finally found a screenshot of it. I'm level 22 in the char, like 20, like 15 to 25 area right. as a Norn. So it doesn't apply to just starter areas. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Any starter, any area of the game. Yeah. Um, you can. I'm pretty sure I found an instance here. That's what the screenshot is, because me and someone else, like we went up to this. There's like, um in the char... Uh, 15 to 25 area. I don't remember where it was exactly on the map, but it's near like a river. It looks like north. Right. Um, but there's like a giant pool with like a ramp going around each side to the far side of the pool where there's like a jet going into the pool and like this big sculpture with a whole bunch of horns. <laughs> there's a gate with an NPC in front of it. Oh, cool. And it, they wouldn't let us inside. So I think that might Another be dungeon. like a level 20 instance. Yeah, a dungeon. Yeah. yeah. We, I think we found a couple. I think it was a level forty dungeon. Well, I'm, the only reason I'm saying that is because because it was a little in level fifteen area. Um, that I'm talking about just outside Divinity's Reach. There's a um, near Beetleton. There, or maybe in Beetleton, yes, in the town there. Yeah, there's a town there, and there's an NPC in front of a, a teleporter to a dungeon. Like what's clearly going to be a dungeon, but she's level forty, so it might actually be a level forty dungeon. There's quite a few like oh, yeah. blocked off area because I found a level seventy one. Wow, like in the last beta. Okay, cool. It was in the I think it was in the Norn, uh, fifteen to twenty five area in the top right corner. Yeah. Um, which I guess would be northeast. There's like a little tunnel system. Right. If you make it to the back, there's like two level seventy NPCs there. Whoa. Okay. The portal. Yeah. Because well, t- to break it down for you, because um, we just discussed how easy it is to get between places in Guild Wars Two. Um, but the thing is, the teleporters in um, Lion's Arch and how you, the, the main way to get between starter areas and general like areas in Guild Wars Two. Um, it takes you to the, the main city of the place you're going. So, again, if I'm if I, a uh, level 22 human and I want to check out the star starting area, I go to, to Divinity's Reach, which is my home city. I take the teleporter to Lion's Arch, um, and then I take the Lion's Arch teleporter to Holbrek. And Holbrek is the Norn star starting city, or in the case of the Char, uh, I take it to the Black Citadel, which is the Char starting city. Um, so the reason that I, I think that these dungeons are in very low level areas, so for example, level 25 areas for the level 70 dungeon and a level 40 area, 15 area for the level 40 dungeon I found at D- Beetleton, the reason for that is they don't want you to have to trek large distances to play with your friends. They want you to be able That's to... That's a good point. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Exactly. So they want you to be able to, like, for example, if you're a level 80 character, but you've never 
have been to Beetleton before. They want you to be able to go to, to Divinity's Reach and maybe a, like a 20 to, to 30 minute trek maximum to get to the next dungeon that you might want to play with your friends. It's kind of cool. I, I like the idea. But it is kind of jarring seeing a level 70 NPC and going, oh, okay, okay, this is going to be something that's maybe for later. <laughs> Yeah, but so so yeah. yeah we'll back, to, back back to your story. So, what do you? Um, how do you like the level twenty five area? What what was it like? What was it about? What did you do there? Um, there was the main the main thing. There's like a mill in the center. This is where I spent most of my time. Right. Um, and there's like a skelk all around it, and one of the the events there is to like try and train them <laughs> and to like uh, kill off the ones like. Um, you know, trying to attack the ones that you're trying to train. Okay. And then inside the mill, you have to, like, collect wood for the mill and, and you know, obviously kill off wild creatures and, like, set traps and all of this other nonsense. Oh, right. And then um, I think it was, what is it, the, um, the Flame Legion? They can actually attack the mill. Okay, cool. And that's actually really, it's actually really difficult. All right. Like, as a, Wait, it's so probably the most difficult Was this a, a renowned event. area or was this, like, just you know, dynamic events that um, popping off? The the flame vision attacking was um, dynamic, and I believe training the skelk was dynamic. Oh, cool! No, that's, so yeah, yeah so the, you found um, um, how many people were you yeah. rolling with? Just the other Lincoln Forcer, or um, um, I was with one Lincoln Forcer for a while, but a lot of the times there was like no one around. I don't know why. Maybe just people didn't yeah. like that area. Well, I, I think was it was, the, it was like um, did. a case of a lot of people were. Just like play being content tourists this weekend, like for me, I, w- I was level twenty two human yeah. level, like starting area for Char. I, th- I don't think many people did what I did later and went um, mainlined a single uh, races area, for example, and continued through their er- like um, higher level areas. So I don't think many people even got to, for example, Kessex Hills for humans or this area for the Char. Like I, I just think it's yeah, I think it's called too. Diesa Plateau. I, I got everywhere. Yeah, got my dirty hands <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Well, did you and like DSR uh, Plateau drifts. Noob? Did, did you uh, spend much time there? Yeah, I sp- that's where the underwater dungeon was. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, right I, I ran across the entrance to that. I didn't go in. Right. Cool. And so did, okay, so we've we finished already going through. So did you find that um, if you had to choose between the level 25 areas that you experienced Noob, which ones would you say that you enjoy the most? Um, Honestly, I preferred, well, 25 areas, what's the... The human 25 area. Uh, Kessex Hills. Is Kessex oh, Hills. Uh, that's actually a really good question. Yeah. Both of them are really good, but I'd probably... Because I didn't run across like a dungeon kind of thing in Kessex Hills, so I'd probably go with the Char one. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good to hear, because I really enjoyed Kessex Hills, um, yeah. that, which is the human one. Uh, to, but just to round out Shinboy, was there anything else you want of particular note actually, that you want to... but while the thing had the dungeon... Um, Kessex Hills probably had better events, like dynamic events. and uh, Yeah, there's really a specific cool. one I want to talk about. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, but yeah, um, anything of note, simply? Um, no, I did, I did not like the Norn 15 to 25. I agree. It was the Snowden Drifts. I agree. Like, there's... Especially the one underwater. Um, wait, so wait. I might quest. be remembering this wrong. Is this the one that's... The, egg, the entrance to it is at the very north of... Um, that hi- that hilly area right next to the dome of the Svanir, like you go right, there's like a there's uh, Dolyax. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That takes you to a different area. This is on the other side. Oh, okay. I've never been to this it's, place. Okay, then I don't know. I have no idea about this place. It's called it's called Snowden Drifts. When you first walk in, if you're walking in from the east, you walk in. There's a little town with a trade broker or whatever. Okay. With a um a trading post. Um. And yeah, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't like it. A lot of the scenery looked the same. All right. Not like the char area where there was a lot of different things going on. Yeah. And um, a lot of it was just. I don't know. This. I don't know whether it was the area's fault or just the spawn timer's fault, because it seemed like everything was really close together and everything respawned really fast. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gotcha. So you would. So, so you it would didn't try and seem pull, like, like very one, balanced an area and not fleshed out, right? Uh. Yeah, because, I mean, there is some interesting stuff. Like, there's a cool little town in, like, one of the corners. There's some interesting events going on there. But other than that, uh, there really wasn't much going on there that I liked. Especially the underwater part was terrible. <laughs> Wait, what did you not like about it? Was it just, like, a... Uh, it was... I think it was, I think this was the area. Um, There was a renowned quest there that was obviously, like, meant to be done by multiple people. Right. And... 
there were not multiple people doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I got you. So, but I feel like for the renowned quests, you should be able to do them by yourself without much issue. Uh, I don't actually... There's some renowned quests that... Actually, let me, let me think. Renowned quests... No, you're right. Renowned quests are generally stuff that you should be able to do by yourself, even if no one else is around. In dynamic events, some of them I, I actually think really benefited from being harder and required multiple people being there. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but I'm not, yeah, no, you, you're I probably know. right. I, I'd say most dynamic events, I'm sorry, re- renowned quests, you should be able to do by yourself. I'm just thinking back to the ones I did over the weekend. Because most of them are like collect stuff or um, kill a certain amount of enemies or uh, help, around, help out this area by like uh, moving tools around or... Stuff like that. So, so maybe. And the way the way that area worked, there was also like a. Um, there was the was it the, Qui Gon something. The Qui Gon. The Dobu. Yeah. Um, the Qui Gon uh, Jin. Yeah, the Qui Gon Jins. <laughs> um, the Liam Neesons. Anyway, there was. Uh, I didn't even know why I laughed at that. That wasn't funny at all. <laughs> Go on. Uh, the game had a bad habit of starting this really, really difficult dynamic event right in the area where you needed to do the renown quest. Oh, right, gotcha. Yeah. So it really became impossible, so I just ignored that. I was, like, level 28, and it's, like, a level 20 quest, and I just didn't even bother. Ouch. So is, and then, uh, so if you were to split up your time in percentages, how much of your time did you, did you spend in PvP versus PvE this weekend? Uh, structured PvP, I barely touched it. Right. I just went in and screwed with builds. Yeah. Um, uh, World v. World, maybe like 15 to 20%, and the rest was okay. all, well, actually, not all PvE, because I did do a lot of crafting. <laughs> right, gotcha. But we already touched that. Yeah, we did. So, but so I would say a little over half. I guess PvE. I'll move on, and, and, and I know that you know I'm going to do this. I guess we'll move on to structured PvP, and, and we'll eventually move on to what uh, I did this weekend. Um. So, structured PvP, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. That's a uh, thing. <sighs> is it? Yeah. And so sad. It like, is. okay. So I, w- I think I said this last week on the. Podcast I don't think it's as bad. Is as it a thing think that people is. will actually care about? Okay, so I'll care about uh, it. Let's let's put this down the table. Um, we'll transition from what Jimboy did to what I did, and I'll, I'll lay it out for you guys. So. In my, in my beta weekend, two weeks ago, I was like, okay, this beta, I'm not going to play any PvE. I'm going to spend all my time on PvP. So I'm only going to do World vs. World and Structured, and I'm going to try to get a whole day of Structured in so I can definitely lay out oh, my feelings about it. That's, those, are, those are my <laughs> thoughts going into the weekend, all right? Um, so it, it ended up pretty well. Like, So for all of Friday, pretty much, and all of Saturday, we did World vs. World. Which I expected myself to do. Like I knew I'd do that anyway, right? I, I love World vs. World. I spent most of the time there, and we'll talk about that later. But for Sunday, I started off the day. I woke up in the morning, had breakfast. I got on, on, on Guild Chat, and a couple people were there who were between events at the moment. I said, hey, let's, let's get a group together, and let's start some structured PvP. Uh, let's, let's get this going. I said I'd do this. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. But the best way we can do it, which is to make a group and to have fun together as a guild, rather than trying out like I'm um, going by myself and maybe not having a perfect experience like I did last weekend. Right. So we get in there. It takes about about what twenty minutes for us to get together, which is fine. Nubarama was there. I was there, and a couple of guys from the guild, Robbie Mac, and uh, a couple couple of others. Um, sorry if I didn't name you. Uh, but so we get in, and there's only there's two NPCs in the mist. So to get, to lay it down for you, just in case anyone out there, out there still doesn't know how it works, um, you can go into the PvP areas from any level. So as soon as you start the game, after you finish the first uh, dynamic event, so the first story point, from then onwards you're set free. You can um, visit the world, the world versus world areas or the structured PvP areas by um, entering this middle land called the Mists, which um, scales you up to level 80, changes your gear out to um, level 80 gear, and changes your skills out to like some presets, which but you can change it and customize it however you want. So to get to the structured PvP area, all you have to do is make a new character, do that first level of quest, and then go there. So that's what we did. I went there with my Mesmer at first, but then ended up switching over to my Warrior for the actual event because I was more comfort- comfortable with that. Um, Robin Mac showed up, Nubarama showed up with his guardian, everyone got together and we started. 
Okay, so in this area called, called the Mists, and there's two NPCs there. One of them is a tournament person, and essentially what you do is one person in your party walks up to him, he initiates the tournament system, and what that does is it, it prompts that person to elect who in his party would be joining him in the tournament. And so he elects the people, everyone in the party is given a prompt, and they can join essentially a tournament group, and you can start a tournament. Um, tournaments are automated, so once enough people have uh, elected to start the tournament, it'll, initi- it'll immediately bamf everyone into the tournament instance, and you can start playing structured PvP. So, were you there with us, Shinpoi, for that, when we did that tournament thing? Uh, no. Okay. I wasn't. So, we get in, right, we talk to that NPC, we start a group, and we, we're sitting there, I, I'm going around checking my skills, checking my um, equipment and stuff. Those guys are pretty happy with what they're rolling with, I'm not sure if I've actually... Ev- end up with them being very optimal for the situation obviously it was one of our first times in instruction pvp so everyone was still experimenting so the first tournament we eventually get into it took about 10 to 20 minutes to wait for it which is in itself an issue but um the first tournament we get into we we immediately get stomped like we get absolutely (laughs) dominated i think it was like 500 shouldn't have been so bad (laughs) <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't like structured PvP because you're bad at it. <laughs> well, partially that's true, right? Like partially you're right in that obviously if we'd done better that first time around in the tournament system, we would have had a better time of it, we would have given it more of a chance and it, later on. But straight up we jumped in, we thought that a bunch of people would be doing tournaments, that's not right. Not many people were doing tournaments in general, it took us a long waiting time, we got into a tournament, we got dominated, but the only people other people doing tournaments at the time, it wasn't a great experience. And I'll and I'll give you that. I'll say that we weren't prepared for it. We didn't really know what we were getting into. The tournament system works because it did eventually put us all there, it did match us up against other players. It did start a tournament off, but it wasn't fun. It it wasn't a situation where I would say, I think we had this discussion in the forums, I'd say it didn't have a good barrier to entry because my major problem with structured PvP and what I'm trans- slowly transitioning into is um, it works in that all the mechanics are there. The capture point system works. I, I, I We'll talk about whether we like it but, or not maybe later we might touch on that i'm not sure we've done it before uh we touched on that on the pvp episode. yeah exactly we, we've all said what we thought about that but um the main thing is like everyone has their lo- fully level characters and various degrees of familiarity with that character so that, that works mechanically um the totem system it said works the the catch up system itself um capturing points and all that stuff feels very good it feels balanced um everyone getting to Everyone moving around the map felt ba- balanced and the timings for everything, so the countdown time and all that stuff to get into it. About. So all, mechanically, it's all there, right? Um, but when it actually comes to who you're playing with and playing with other people in a PvP environment, it just didn't gel. And the reason why I think it didn't gel for us was that a very specific issue with structured PvP in Guild Wars 2 is that you don't really know, if you go in with, by yourself or if you go with the group, you don't really know who you're playing with and who you're playing against. So what I mean by that is when you're playing structured PvP in, for example, a first-person shooter, um, you'd be going in and in Call of Duty you'd see ranks next to their name, you'd have a general idea of who, how everyone's going, who, what, what level of um, experience each person has had. Like something as simple as that can give you an indication of A, who you're playing with, and in, on the opposition side, who you're playing against. So our main problem with jumping into structured PvP in, in that first time as a group was that we were matched up against people who'd played significantly more than us. Like The main problem wasn't that we were bad at the game, in my opinion. It was, it was that we straight up, the only people playing at the time was that really hardcore group. And the reason we were raped as hard as we were and were surprised by the fact was we didn't really know going into it that they were the only other people playing. Like, it didn't give us a good indication of who who else is entering the tournament. It didn't give us a good indication, uh, indication when entering the tournament, like, who they were and how long they'd be playing and how many tournament points, for example, they've had or how long they'd be playing structured PvP, what their average valor was, for example. Um, none of that was really transmitted to us. So when we got into the second point was after we got dominated by that, we didn't give up on the spot. We said, hey... Let's try out some normal structured PvP ourselves, some non-tournament stuff to see how that goes. So bear with me. I know I'm switching between topics quite often, but stick with me. All right. So we finished that tournament. 
We walk out, we feel interjected, we got absolutely annihilated. We didn't even wait for the second and third rounds. We just kind of quit. Okay. So we get out, we go, hey, let's try some normal structured PvP together. So we're still in the team. We walk over to the other NPC in the, in the mist. So there's two NPCs, one's for tournaments, one for actual normal pickup games. And again, I, I'm met with a situation where things just feel a bit off. So you walk up to him, and how it works is when you want to join random structured PvP, you have two options. You either go to your um, character sheet and hit uh, play now, which is essentially a random match, and you, you teleport into a match and you just play whoever's there and you exit whenever you want to exit. Or you can go up to this NPC, and what he does is he presents you a straight up first person studio style server list. Server browser, yeah, that's great. I don't agree because <laughs> literally it's just like uh get like a list of games and then you go 16 of 16 people play, play players playing and so on and so forth zero out of 16 and so, on and so forth, and you just double click the one you want to go to and you enter well what, what, what do you feel about that system um shin boy do, do you like it i don't know i kind of i kind of like the server browser <laughs> i'm partial to server browsers <laughs> uh, so I, screw your matchmaking yeah exactly i, I felt well we'll get to that screw we'll get to that i need a server browser oh my god so we'll when presented with a server browser, I expect a couple of pieces of information beyond what they give you. So all, all they really give you there is um, how many people are currently in that match. What they don't give you is, again, returning to my main topic, they don't give you what the peop- who the people are. They don't tell you whether they're in guilds. They don't tell you like whether they're playing together as a well, guild. I mean, it was the same way in the first game. Well, right. Like, the, prob- the, problem with the, the problem with doing that is that basically that would allow people who are really good at the game and enjoy trolling people to go in and just destroy people who are clearly not as good at the game as they are, or maybe not as, as well geared or things like that. Yeah. You have to have the an- anonymity in there for it to make sense. Well, that, that's, that's true. But also if you're in my, in my, because, okay, the server bar system works if you don't have that situation happening. It works if uh, you have a bunch of people who just want to play together. It doesn't really matter what server you join, but you um, kind of just get, just want to jump in and have fun, right? Um, right, but the problem is what you're asking for is an ideal world that doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm asking Wait, for... The only thing is, with the server browser, can you create a private game? Because that would be yeah, so what, what, the ideal thing. Exactly. So the the first issue we jumped into, what we found out was, when you join an empty game, because again, we didn't have any information about who was there, so we weren't really comfortable about being matchmade against people. Sorry, not matchmade. Being put up against people who we, we weren't familiar with. So we went into an empty match, and we all joined at the same time. So the first thing we discovered was you can't enter structured PvP random matches as a team. You can only go in solo. Oh, that's kind of lame. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who initiates the transition, but what happens was a person goes up to the structured PvP NPC, he joins an empty server, and suddenly he goes black. Like if you're familiar with the interface, on the top left-hand corner of your screen when you're in a party is the other four people in your party. You have the health bars, you have the names yeah. and stuff like that. He just goes black. Which means he's essentially left the same server as you're on, and we're like, "What? Okay." And we join the same game as him, and not only does it did it um, remove him from our party, not not remove him from our party, but like separate him from us uh, entirely and not bring us with him when he entered the game. But when we entered the game, he was on the like we were split between the two teams, so. Yeah, we had situations where like three of us were on one team, one of us when the other, two of us on the other, or four one that kind of stuff. And dumber still, right? Because we were still in the same party, I could still tell where they were on the map. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's an issue. That's so on multiple <laughs> cases here. Issue. See, like <laughs> I didn't have this. Okay, this is why we have differing opinions on structure because I pretty much like lone wolfed it the whole time, yeah. so I didn't run into any of these issues. Exactly. So. Well, and what I was gonna say too, like your issue of like you not being able to queue together mm-hmm. or or join a, a server together, or whatever. In this instance, um, is there going to be some sort of like a a rated? Um, structured pvp or is this just the only structured pvp there is at the moment there's just the two there's tournaments and then there's random that's it okay what I, what i'm what i'm thinking is tournaments basically i imagine are their version of rated rated yeah. structured pvp yeah and that's why that's where you can go in as a group yeah and and play in there the non non-rated which would be just the normal structured pvp in a lot of current mmos you cannot group up together and if you can like in, in the instance of like star wars um, I think you can only group up to like five people or up to four people of the, of the eight that can go in. Right. And the, the idea behind that is that way you can't just go in as a as a guild and just fucking 
steamroll the other team because yeah. you have way more, um, uh, you know, you, you work together better, and, and yeah, yeah, you have you have vent to to work with. Like that, that's why that exists. Yeah, so I, I, I'll concede that. I'll say that. Um, sure, that's fine. But all yeah, the party these thing are, that's definitely a fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but all of these are suboptimal solutions to a problem that's already been solved. Right. Um, So what what I'm breaking it down to and what I'm trying to get to in terms of my point is that none of this, none of the issues I experienced all day with structured PvP, which I had. And I have to say that we we stuck with it. We stayed. um, We eventually used the party switching things between rounds to eventually get to most of the people in the same party. New Barama left. Um, We stuck with it for a couple, like about maybe an hour or two and played against some random teams as a, as a guild team. We went freaking steam. I only left because you guys were terrible. I want to (laughs) be brought down by you. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. I told them they were bad. Oh God. I was um, playing with you guys again. You guys are terrible. You are so bad at structure oh, PvP. Anyway, so yo noob, we're forming a pro team, okay? <laughs> it's because and, you, and, it's and you people are giving me shit for not playing with you. So <laughs> all of these problems would be solved if they just had teamed, um, match made PvP. <laughs> team arenas, like what team you're saying arenas. is. Skirmish. They removed that from the first right. game. What the hell? Well, what you're saying is basically the tournaments, then, right? No, I, I'm well, speaking like, of matchmaking in HA. general. So, in structured PvP, currently, like we just showed you the, the dichotomy between the systems. So you have one which is essentially a server list, which you jump into a random server and pit against random people. Another, which is the tournament system. The both things could be formed into one thing if they just made it fully um, match made. Right, so if you're jumping in with a team of people, you'd be match made against people who are also jumping with a team of people, or a group of people who've been with together with each other for a couple of rounds, who've demonstrated some prowess. You'd be match made against them, or if you're jumping in alone, you wouldn't prowess. have situations. What? Yeah, you, <laughs> I was laughing at that too inside. <laughs> what, is it, it's, it's a fancy <laughs> word, is it? Prowess. <laughs> it's prowess. Some anyway, prowess. at least in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> yeah, it's prowess. I, I prowess. Um, so no one says prowess. Anyway, you wouldn't have situations Apologize. where That's a person who hasn't been playing the game for long right is match made against people who've been playing for a long time. Like, you wouldn't have that situation which we first ran into with, when going in as a team. Well, I mean, that's what RA was in Guild Wars 1, and no one really seemed to have a problem with that's RA. That's a seven-year-old RA game. has a random... <laughs> Guild Wars 1's an yeah, old but I mean, game. Like, like, it's fine for it to have those I don't issues, know. but in modern... I think if, it's, if you're just jumping into, like... By yourself into structured PvP, I have no problem with there being no real, like level based or skill based matchmaking. Really, you don't have a problem with that? You don't think yeah. it's weird no, that a person random. who goes in for the first time to structured PvP can be matchmade? Oh, sorry, be pitted against people who have been playing for days and days and get absolutely ruffle stomped and not have sure. a farm. The only, you know, well, because the only reason shit, I see that the whole team. when you're casual. Yeah, the, the only reason I see that at all being an issue is if they are truly trying to take this to like a an esports level of com- of competitiveness, and then I can see there being some sort of like a matchmaking ladder in there. No, um, I, I, I disagree. I, th- I think matchmaking is a staple of a modern game. I think any modern game which has a structured PvP kind of system, which play, which is seriously is people versus people, should have matchmaking. It, it should. Yeah, you you should be able to play against the person that you actually want to play. Against. Yeah, the, the you should be able to have uh, or, fun. Or the, like that's what team. it boils down to. You should be able to enter PvP and have fun no matter it doesn't matter who they're playing against it, it doesn't matter what's happening in the thing it has to be fun and people aren't having fun out there like a lot of people like me are playing structured pvp for a short period of time and then straight up just giving up on it either because for example you're bad i entered normal random games for <laughs> myself people and then bears. just fucking dominated i was the top of the list for multiple games in a row it wasn't fun because i wasn't being challenged i, I changed servers i did that kind of stuff but i still just dominate everyone around me um but when I entered a tournament system, as I said, with my guild, then we just got ruffle stomped by people who knew what they were doing. Like it wasn't. It was a case where I... the tournaments. I'll, I'll give you the matchmaking for the tournaments that needs to be done. Yeah, I, but of course, um, like but if you're just entering by yourself, I don't think. Yeah, it's that's, that's the thing. Like issue. you're saying, the matchmaking is a, a staple of games, and I think what what you're calling matchmaking is not matchmaking. What you want is a ladder system. Matchmaking is simply clicking a button and having it throw you into a game. Yeah. Well, well I, I think a ladder system, system that's not something that exists no in I, I'm talking about matchmaking I, I, in the terms of Halo multiplayer I'm thinking of actually oh God, looking at player skill like. Give me looking at better. player skill 
um, rating people internally, whether by uh, surfaced statistics or not surfaced statistics. And, and and again, that's not something that exists in most MMOs. And when it oh, does yeah. exist, that is in a separate rated um, mode. But why does it have to be rated? Like it's it's a single or encompassing system which can solve many issues existing. I I I I'll, I'll because succeed, some people because prefer I don't really the way that, that, that it exists currently. Some people prefer either just basic matchmaking or however, however they're doing the system. Some people pr- prefer it to be kind of the you know matched up against whoever, or they don't care. Yeah, they, they don't, don't care. care. About I, they don't I think care about I don't anything. think it's, it's a matter of preference. This, and then there are people that do care. And that's what the rated version is. Yeah, two systems. For. This is stupid. So, it's, uh, why why are MMOs still like this? What why is this? How how, is, how have shooters solved the problem? Not, not really solved it, but have progressed along the line towards solving it. And MMOs are still in this case where people don't really know that there's a better solution out there to PvP. Wait, what do you what do you well, want? Because because. Because MMOs have been fucking inbreeding for the past over a goddamn decade, and they've stagnated to the point where even even the one that comes out, yeah, sh- <laughs> shooters hey, really shooters have good they have evolved. Shooters have evolved in notable ways well, within the I've last decade. I've never played like so. a console shooter, so I don't know what the fuck matchmaking is like. So matchmaking like, is okay. Okay, 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 okay it's servers. Oh yeah. So matchmaking is um, when you play when you play. Uh, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Before you go any further. You are not talking about matchmaking. You're talking. I'm talking about, about modern um, matchmaking, skill matching. Yeah. No, you're talking about skill Which matching. Which is encompassing skill matchmaking matching. is completely different. Oh, yeah, modern skill matching matchmaking and matchmaking are different. Yeah, matchmaking is simply you Finding pressing the game, button yeah. you want to go and play, and it throws you into a game. That's a skill random. Matching. That's so, a so, randomized player pairing system. That is not modern. That is called matchmaking. That is not modern that's, matchmaking. That's, matchmaking. That is, yeah, that is but, matchmaking. What you're talking about is a good. What you're talking about is a type of matchmaking, but just using the umbrella term of matchmaking. Can be confusing. Okay, sure. A so this match, is called skill a matching, match then, right? System. So does everyone here know what I mean by skill matching? Maybe. Yes. Okay, so yeah. what it is is you when you play PvP, it level. tracks statistics about how you play. It's not only what your kill death ratio is, but how long you stay alive, how what kind of things you do, like how okay, so what your like reaction a, times are in a MOBA. Something like that. Yeah, and it, 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 it assigns either a surfaced or non-surfaced statistical level to you. So essentially it says, it's the same thing that uh, StarCraft does in, in surface. Like obviously they say what they do, yeah, but they have Diamond yeah, League. It's basically a ladder system, whether it be something yeah. shown to the player or so, not. And, and yeah, exactly. So they actually show you <laughs> to the player, they tell you what league you are and that kind of stuff. That's that's a skill matching system, which, which, which essentially says, hey, by looking at the statistics about how you play and how you've done, this is how good you are and we'll match, we'll pair you against people who have the same relative level of skill or have demonstrated that they are generally around the same level of skills you or slightly above you or maybe only slightly below you, right? So that's a system where no matter what level you go in, no matter how many people you go into the match with, you'd have a situation where you'd be paired against people who are doing the same thing because actually they're statistically tracking who you are, how you play, how good you are, and putting you against people who it thinks are appropriate for you. So if you're entering PvP, structured PvP for the first time, and a good skill matching system is in, implemented in the game, that doesn't matter if you go in alone, it doesn't matter if you go in as a team, you'll always have fun because you're always playing against people who won't ruffle stump you. I think that's the, where, the, where the problem is. Is that, Again, like what you're, what you're asking for is called rated whatever right. the game calls it in any other game. Like in WoW, it's called rated battlegrounds. Right. That exists as that. But then separately of that, there is just plain old battlegrounds, and that's where you just queue up and you just go in against random people. But why, why is and there a difference? The more, that, because, because that's that's the more popular option. The people who go into I, I the, the, the rated stuff... I think it's the more popular option because rated sounds scary. The people who go into the rated stuff, those are the ones who go in together as a group. They're serious about the right. Yeah, exactly. Community. Rated you means serious, right? Ra- when you see the word rated, you see the word tournament. All these mean serious players doing serious things with PvP. But there's no reason yeah. for that to be the case. Like you could just call it PvP and go because join that's, a match. No, it shouldn't it, because have that's the that that's the that's the, the audience that that brings. No, because it's not, it's not an industry standard. That's the audience that that brings. Right. But it doesn't People matter. People who actually care about PvP and that is that is why they play whatever the MMO is. But it doesn't matter they because they, they would the be skill stuff. matched against people who are also doing the same thing. But you wouldn't have the case like you have now of someone who isn't very experienced skill matched against like matched against them. Like that would never happen if you have a skill matching system. Like everyone could have one umbrella of PvP and all get what they want from it because you are. It's the same reason. Match. It's the same reason why in StarCraft the option exists for a to go game. in and just play yeah. random games against people. You have yeah. to have that option because some people aren't yeah, like I don't you, wanna, and some people right. do like randomly playing against other people. 
So what's what's missing from Guild Wars, if anything is missing at all, is some sort of a rated option like that where you can queue as a group and you can go in there and it, and it match makes you, you know, matches you against people who are of similar skill level. And and I would agree that maybe that is missing. I thought that's what the tournament system no, that, that, was. The tournament system, I, the tournament I think system what it did be. was not many people were doing tournaments. So it put us against those guys because those are the only other guys who were doing tournaments at the time. I'm not, I'm not yeah, certain yeah. if they put in any form of skill matching in the tournament system. It, it, it's, it sounds like that's what the tournament system is supposed to be considering. That's the... That's the cause it, what you're doing is essentially the same as structured PvP, right? It's yeah. The same maps and everything? Yeah. Okay, that that sounds like that's basically their version of Rated Battlegrounds, is is the tournament system where you can go in, you can queue up queue up as a group. I imagine there's probably some kind of stat tracking, I would hope. Yeah, there's probably um, some more. Probably. We don't know. The, we don't know. The, the, the separate existence of just plain old um, structured PvP, that exists for a reason. It I, exists I, because there are people that I want that. I think it's that. dumb. I think it's dumb that people Well, the vast majority of people who play... That? Because they've the been trained to want people that. Who play this, casual PvP, people they have want moved that. from being having bad experiences but jumping to rated PvP, and that's why this current like populace exists of people who actively aren't looking for a structured kind of um, match made system, a skill based. No, because that's that's the thing is that the 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 non the non skill based match made system came after or the, uh, the skill based match made system came after the fact. The non one is what people have been playing. Yeah, exactly. That's what they enjoy. I think it's a really bad thing that that's the case. I think. If they had an umbrella system, but the problem is that if you if you as a game developer have a a, a style in in the game that people enjoy, where where does it make any sense at all to cut that? Just because you may think that oh yeah, like Guild Wars Two has done everything like every other MMO has done. But I'm saying though that, that in Guys, terms of podcast is getting serious <laughs> right now. In, in terms in terms oh, of PvP, thanks. like that's something you you kind of you want to include in there. Yeah, why just why why do we need why to would have you why would you cut it just for the sake thing. of cutting it? Because they're not cutting it for the sake of cutting it. Because you ha- are having situations where people are walking in by themselves and getting dominated right, because they happen to happen to jump in the same server as people. And same then if they time. if they don't want to do that, they have the tournament mode. Right. But tournament there, there are we, the two options. For one, why, we haven't established whether the tournament better? mode does skill matching. We are not sure, right? Um, it, should. it should, but it we don't know. It, it seems like yeah, it seems like that's what that is. Because again, this is something that every MMO seems to be launching with now is a non-rated and a rated battlegrounds, with the exception of Star Wars, who is putting the rated stuff. I, I just, I just, I'm just, just going to keep an end to this conversation because like we are getting a bit too like uh, inside baseball here, but. I, as my personal opinion, think they should just have an umbrella system. People just match made against people of equivalent skill. And no, it's never surfaced. It should never be called rated system and, because it's scary. And, and it's my, a scary term. And, and my argument against that is why, why, would you take, why, would you, why would you take away options to the player? Right. Why only because have one people are, have would two. literally have a better time of it. Because well, you'd why, only be why can't you have two? Why do says, you says you because that, that is your play style. But there are other people that do enjoy that play style. Well, pe- take people that like them. suddenly being finding someone who's much better than them, or suddenly being able to pwn someone who's much worse than them. Like that's, sure. that's a thing people like doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That, that, okay, there's sure. a reason why. Sure. <laughs> there's a reason why the rated stuff exists, and it's because there are those people that like to just fucking destroy people who are way worse than them, <sighs> and that gets them away from there as much as they can because then they go they can go in here and they can do this stuff instead. Yeah. Or that specifically gets the people who don't want to deal with that to go and do the rated stuff because they know they're going to be playing against people that are more of their skill level. Like you have to have those two. Those why two why do you exist. why can you why do you have to only have one when you can just have two? I don't understand why it detracts from the game having two options rather than Because one. at the moment most exactly. people are playing the one which doesn't have any form of rating. That's that's the current problem. Because you can also no, because you can join that one by yourself. You don't need yeah. a team. So th- there yeah. isn't a system which has a, that, that's true as well. There there isn't a system which a single person can go into a rating system. There isn't a person you who, can't go into a tournament by yourself. No. Well, they can fix. You're that. completely incapable. Yeah, you, you're you're, 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 you're well, wouldn't make not, sense. You have to, to enter as a team. That makes sense to me. It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense, a, it makes sense like, given that it's call, yeah. calling it a tournament. Yeah, it's a tournament system, and but, you get but it's, stuff. It's, it's, yeah, the people who like me want to be matched, like skill matched against people, but don't want to go in with a team or d- don't have the team available to me, are getting screwed at the moment. Yeah, I think that should be in there, but I think you. Sh- I don't think you should put that in there by eliminating the other exactly. random system. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll concede that maybe people just like ruffle stomping and being ruffle stomping. I think That's you fair. had a bad experience with the... I think you had a bad experience with the tournament because no one oh, else yeah, no, I, 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 I agree against with that. the other That's, people. That's yeah, and, and I, also do, I also do feel like it's too early to say that everybody is doing this way or nobody is doing this way. Like, we have, we've had two beta weekends. Yeah, exactly. I, I, make, like, making that broad of a statement, I think it's, it's a little bit early. Well, well we, I think the statement is valid for the beta but not valid for release. 
because in both beta weekends it was the case that almost everyone did the randomized version and very few well this one was the first one with the tournament system right um well because i i think with the random people just want to go okay let's see what this yeah exactly yeah yeah. they just go in as soon as they can and and a lot of people are still are still bad at their characters they still don't understand really the the intricacies of them yeah like let, let's 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 revisit this maybe exactly a few months and, after and that's my stance after the in. second beta weekend even though i gave it a, an honest to goodness shot of liking P- structured pvp my stance at the end I of it the is actual, fuck like, that noise until until either something's fixed or the game's released and i have a better idea of how it's going to go down fuck it i'm not going to get i'm not going to touch it again it's not for me <laughs> <laughs> my final say with structured pvp is even though the systems around it may not be the best i thought the pvp itself was pretty fun I thought it was okay. So I thought it was that. okay. Straight capture point is still not my thing. <laughs> I thought doing that by myself was more fun than doing World v. World. Oh, I would I probably agree, agree with yeah, that. I That's agree. a great time to transition. World, I love World v. World, but it's yes. a great time to transition. Yeah. In fact, um, I like doing that welcome, by myself guys. than I'm trying to play World v. World with anyone. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I, I just pref- can, can I we prefer cover... the structured PvP over World vs. World. Really? Can we cover yeah. World v. World in like 15 minutes? Yeah, oh, that's a good that. point. What are we at now? Not, we're at we're two at hours and forty-five. We're, like two, we're at like two and a half hours. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's so, that's so silly. It's short. How about we just do it in its own podcast? How about we do it next week? We'll just, yeah, we'll just say sure. that. Say, say we'll we'll that. because there's no there's no beta this weekend, so we can just yeah we'll, yeah we we'll do a couple weeks of impressions. Um, but so what I'll do is I'll, I'll say what PVE I did. So when I had that problem with uh, structured PVP and uh, had a little bit of falling out with it. Um, I, I, I moved on to just doing PVE for that third and final day and the second night, I think it was. So I, I've jumped in with my human, uh, level 22 human, no, at level 16 at the time. And I finally experienced uh, the starter human area. I still, okay, so I, I did a couple of things, a couple of memorable moments. Um, and we'll move on to our favorite moments for the weekend to, to round out the show. But a couple of memorable moments was, um, again, you can you can help out guildies. You can go back to er- earlier areas. But the problem was I was level 20-something, and I was helping out a dude who just started the human um, storyline. So his, all, all this stuff was happening in Divinity's Reach. And everyone has been paying to, attention to the hot podcast. I've stated before that I'm actually actively avoiding Divinity's Reach, and I don't want to see any of it till release. So what I had to do was um, I jumped in with the same party as him, and we went to Divinity's Reach. So what I did was I took the camera, I made it top down, so entirely top down, right? And then zoomed out to the case where I could pretty much just see the floor and a little bit around me, but not any of the buildings. And I played it like that for about an hour and an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say that Divinity's Reach has amazing floors. And I can say that um, the human starting experience is pretty cool in Divinity's Reach from what I saw of his cutscenes, what I allowed myself to see for his cutscenes. But aside from that, I still haven't seen any of Divinity's Reach, which is a high five of all, which is really hilarious. I, everyone should try it out. You should, you should try playing Gears 2 as a top-down um, RPG. It's a bit of an interesting difference. Like Diablo? Be, well, it wasn't even like Diablo, because <laughs> this was like truly top-down. All I can see is the top of my head <laughs> and the floor around me and enemies like in the edges of my screen because I didn't zoom out too much because I didn't want to see too much. It was um, it was fun. Try it out. It, it was interesting and different. Um, but aside from that, I pretty much just did uh, Cassex Hills, which was... So has anybody else here done uh, being in Cassex Hills as, as the human uh, 15 I've five? done a little bit of it, yeah. No. I, did a little I little completely bit, yeah. got the 100%. Well, I say, I say a little bit. I've done so. most of it. Whoa, new 100% in it. So there's a yeah. couple of things that I'd love to talk about to uh, Cassex Hills before moving on to the next topic, which is our favorite moments for the weekend. Um, one was the jumping puzzle, which we've already talked about. The second was the diving thing. So there's a point in Cassex Hills which uh, overlooks like this 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 uh, riverside, no, lakeside town, I think it was. And there's if you walk all the way around it, at the top, there's a, um, there's a ledge there past some Ettons and... At the very tip of the ledge, there's two like devil goggles on the ground, and we've seen this before. It was in I think there's one in um, Lion's Arch as well, but it's the first time I did it. Did, you, did anyone else try diving in Guild Wars Two? Uh, I did it in LA because there's a actually like um, what the hell they're called a point of interest. It's actually like the diving. Oh, platform. cool. Something like that. Yeah. I, yeah. Did you? Did you climb, like, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it, it was pretty random and different and fun like you can't take the driving mm. goggles and go a different direction they automatically unequipped um 
But if you grab them, what you do is it, it replaces your weapon set and it replaces it with a couple of skills. I think there's like a turn, and there's flip, and there's, I don't know the names for them, but they make your character do weird, like in air tricks. And you jump off the edge, and then you have to quickly like try to time them right so you make a good landing or belly. Or if you do it proper, poorly, you belly flop at the end. And I think if you do it right and you land it properly, stick stick the landing, um, you get an achievement for it. It's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. really? That didn't happen in LA. <laughs> At least I didn't. I know there's like a quote-unquote diving platform. Maybe I just didn't talk to the NPC. Right, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure they get, one of us got a, an achievement. Maybe it might have been like doing a certain amount of tricks in the air, but there is some form of achievement attached to it, and I, I totally recommend people try it out. It's pretty fun. Um, so, Nubarama, you 100% in Kessex Hills. Yep. So I, I best get, guess we could both talk about probably my favorite dynamic event of the thing, which was uh, you, you, about halfway through Kessex Hills, you see like this red glowing lava area, right? Oh, like, so the destroyer. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. that too. Yeah. So it's oh, wait. Anyway, so I, I was oh, walking sorry. towards <laughs> that, that area, right? And there's a gigantic wall there. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I walk up and I see... The thing that made me shit myself the most, not like not out of happiness, like it was a happy shit. It was a, <laughs> it was, wow. I was so That's overjoyed uh, to see them. The shit um, came out with a th- smile on it. Yeah, exactly. It came out in the form of a smile in my pants. Um, <laughs> it, it was a fixer didn't happen. <laughs> uh, well, a Tengu. I'm disgusted. And <laughs> I love the Tengu. I, oh, the Tengu not are, the destroyers, just the Tengu. That's all that mattered to the, you. The single Tengu who was standing above this giant pit of lava. I was there. I was like, yes, Tengu! Oh, he was he was the karma vendor, yeah, wasn't he? Was. he? For that he was area? freaking awesome. Okay, I, I saw that He was that the first part. Tengu I've ever seen um, in Guild Wars 2. And I, I walked up to him and I talked to him and I was like just tripping balls the entire time and just like totally enjoying it because after I saw him... I looked behind him and looked closer at that wall. What turns out is, if you talk to him a bit, um, the entire Tengu area of uh, the Kryta region of Wukil Wars 2, which is kind of near the human starting area, has been walled off by the Tengu because they actually think that humanity is a, is a pretty shitty race to live with, um, and which is fair because we kind of did kind of... Because in the original Guild Wars, out. I literally spent hours <laughs> killing Tengu for their... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I can see why they don't like humans. Yeah, and it's not like they came to us and attacked us. We gen- like, adventurers would run into the tanker area and just like destroy tanker. Anyway, yeah, you got to make so, those concepts. You got to make a living. Tengu, <laughs> valuable. So there's this gigantic wall there, walling off the, the Tengu city. And again, I, I really hope that they let us play Tengu for one of the expansions because it's, it's all there. It's in the world. I know the city's oh, no, there behind that fucking wall. Because everyone would play Tengu, right? I'd play Tengu. Tengu would no. be like the my main. Oh yeah, so if you don't know what Tengu is, no. they're Tengu in like the D and D sense. So I, I think um in I think it's a uh, Chinese mythology or was it no Japanese Japanese mythology. Um, so they're bird people. They they have like opposable fingers in their wings. They can't fly. Um, like as part of their wings, the, the opposable fingers, and they have like normal feet, but they they wear human ish clothes. Um, they have beaks so that. It's weird because I, I found this is a problem with a lot of the races in Guild Wars 2. You talk to, like, for example, the giants in the um, in the Norn Starter area or the Tengu in this case or, like, even Etten sometimes, and they sound really human. Like, have you guys noticed that? Yeah, yeah that kind of bothered yeah. me. Yeah. Like, Tengus have beaks, guys. Well, <laughs> even have... in the original Guild Wars, <laughs> it was assumed that Tengu were, like, people. They spoke everything. And everything. Well, they, 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 they had a very distinct voice to them in the original Guild Wars. They had, like, the no, screechy didn't. kind of... Yeah, they did. That, that was, what? like, the shrill Tengu yell. That's not them talking. Them talking. No, yeah. When, when you're talking to Silverwing, he has, a screechy, he has a screechy voice. It's a very, like, uh, raspy kind of voice. Yeah, but that's... It's not very different from a person. Oh, it's still, he's still speaking English, but right. he has, like, all the Tengu you speak to in the original Guild Wars at least have, like, some kind of tonality to them. Different, different All of the characters English. had some tonality that would make Korean. them sound human. <laughs> That's what was I that a dig at Guild Wars 1 oh, voice geez. acting? Oh, yeah. yeah. Something wrong okay. with those voice actors. Maybe they all but, have, no, like, yeah, throat I'm, cancer or something. In this case... By Balthazar's beard, Rin burn. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, hold on. While we're on the topic of voice acting... <laughs> Favorite thing in all of Guild Wars 2 in the LA in like the market district by like the Trading Post and um, the Mystic Forge. We haven't talked about that yet. By the yeah, way. that's true. Um, anyway, 
there's one guy who just always yells out by Ogden's hammer, what savings? <laughs> it's like my favorite thing in the whole That's universe. Because it's it's such a bad cheesy line and it's delivered in the most perfect way. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do you think it was intentionally bad good or do you think it was just bad? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Definitely. <laughs> by the way, um what's his face? Uh bracket bartender name yeah, in close bracket guy is still exists in um <laughs> in uh Black Citadel. And I really hate yeah. the fact they took out sit jumping and sleep jumping. I thought they'd leave that yeah. into the end of the beaters. Rest in peace, sit jumping. I know. Cool, man. No, knockdown so running don't still in. It oh, constantly, man. I bet. Yeah, knockdown running. But we catch out the last beat the live stream to to see that. But um just to back back to my I got life. stuck in like the standard three D model um thing with like your legs locked together and your arms at like a forty five degree angle down. Yeah. I got stuck in that and was just like levitating around the world. It was kind of weird. <laughs> um, but to, to get back to my story, so you meet this Tengu. Felt like a Mursat. And he looked behind him. Oh, the Mursat were the fanta- fantastic character design the first game was. I love them. They're probably my favorite enemies. I felt like a Mursat. So you sorry? Anyway. You hated the Mursat. No, say, look, when I, when I was in no, when I was Oh, you felt like a Mursat. felt like yeah. a Mursat. Mursat was so cool. Anyway, so you I look behind this Tengu Mursat. and this gigantic oh, wall, right? And you look close Spectral to the wall agony. and it's got all this beautiful, like, engravings in it which are like if you look closer still there's like a face of a tengu like artfully sculpted out in this gigantic wall and I like all this like um you get the idea of the entire tengu ra- oh, i may be just a tengu fanboy but anyway you get you get an idea of the tengu yes, race but just yes, you seeing this wonderfully sculpted wall and just below them is this huge like pit of lava because what's happening is and uh, spoilers, so in case, and Noob ruined it before, but um, if, if you don't want to know about Guild Wars 1 storyline, if you don't want to know too much about uh, this area of Guild Wars 2, then maybe tune out for probably next minute. So, all right, spoiler for winning ends there. Um, there's a huge pit of lava, and what's happening is this, the destroyers are back. So uh, there's like well, the fonts. destroyers were always there. It's not like they disappeared. Yeah, well, we kind of we kind of beat them down, right? But uh, they're did we? <laughs> Apparently not. not. We didn't Clearly really not. <laughs> and it was a great experience because it was like uh, there's two moments in this where I found the Guild Wars two interpretation of how things looked in Guild Wars one is like a, a beautiful contrast. So the, the destroyer models have all been updated. There's new, new destroyer types. They came out of the ground. You attack them, and you have um like a enemies from around the world in Guild Wars 2 so in the countryside for example there was like a destroyer um, devourer which looked really badass and really interesting looking like they, they twisted the um, look of all the like nearby fauna and, and flora so it, all the like, destroy area was awesome and everything was like covered in this like layer of like uh, sulfuric I assume even though your character doesn't die by entering it but a, like an ash mist so you enter this like misty area with like red highlights because there's glowing lava and all this stuff it was a beautiful area and then it, as a backdrop to the whole thing you have that gigantic awesome tengu wall to their city it was like the coolest part of Kassex Hills in my opinion was just there's that like little cave. spot yeah and you enter the cave you kill some destroyers and awesome shit happens destroyer. yeah that was a really gay part yeah there's a few dynamic events there. yeah and the other one was uh if there's like a swamp area to those the south just before Kessex Hills. Yeah. And um, yeah. And which is, which is pretty cool because it's, it's actually the Temple of Ages from the original Guild Wars. So if you dive underwater, you can see like the um, the, the what's left of the statue of Duena and the statue and like, of. They uh, tied that yeah, in. I saw because, that. That was um, pretty the, awesome. It's, because it's the Temple of Ages, there's still like a connection to the underworld and all of these yeah. uh, attacks and stuff are spawning in. Exactly. And you can really see cool. the new like interpretation of how the, yeah. the bladed attacks looks. And it's really cool. It so I, cool. Yeah. I think it looks less yeah, cool than the original. The, the attacks are like ghosts. It's weird. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's, uh, there's ghosts like as well. Black shade around them. Yeah. yeah. They're not just like big hulking. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Solid. But they're purple now. I thought I liked them before when they were just like this black, dark, like moving. Yeah, as long as they still drop echoes. <laughs> yeah, they don't drop echoes. <laughs> they don't drop echoes. <laughs> we killed quite a few. Uh, they didn't drop anything special. But um, yeah, that was cool. Like a... Yeah, it doesn't mean the drop rate's high. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't it's mean the drop, drop rate is. Fuck off. I, oh, they could. They could. Yeah, those things in Maguma, f- Maguma Jungle, they drop echoes. Really? No. In the first what? killers, yeah. It's not, nothing in saying, there's like, Maguma Jungle drops echoes. Yeah, there's... Yeah, look it up. It's like a super, super, super low oh, drop cool. rate. It's like... 0.001%. Nice. If that. Anyway, 
So th- those are two areas that I really enjoyed from this hu- human starting area. Like, so the jumping section, um, the diving section, the uh, where area where Galrath used to be. So the Legend of Gal- the uh, quest line, I think it was called Legend of Galrath. And at the end of it, you kill Galrath. Spoilers. Um, from the first Guild Wars from seven years ago. But you, you like the, the castle that he uh, had, or the castle that was behind the area, I'm not sure what the background of it is, is still floating there in Guild Wars 2 over this like large like lake. And there's a, there's a lakeside town there, and there's people there who like are living in the shadow of this huge, like ominous, dark-looking castle. But you still can't go to the castle, at least not yet. Do you, do you think we actually ever end up being able to go there, Noob? Where? The, the castle, the Galrath castle, which is floating oh, above Kessex Hills. Yeah. Like, I, I tried to swim, but there was an invisible wall. Oh, I imagine wall. so. Yeah, there's an invisible wall if you try to swim there. It's just, oh, I just really want to go up yeah. there. It reminds me of Ida's castle from um, Final Fantasy VIII. Because it's chained oh, to the ground. Final, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy VIII. It's oh, a decent Jesus game. Christ. Come on. It's a, I'm, I'm sorry. Game. Game. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's it's tactics. Um, I'm sorry, but yeah, like it's this huge, <sighs> like floating castle, uh, floating. There's a giant piece of like rock, and it's chained to the ground. It's been chained there for hundreds of years, apparently, because it's still there. And I really hope we get to go there, Guild Wars Two. So there's a couple of like notes there for the future that I was really excited about. I By actually the way, really that enjoyed. Area in the original Guild Wars is so fucked up. It's full of like hundreds of mesmers up on a hill cliff, and then you yeah. can't attack them while you're trying to walk through. I remember so crying good. when I was trying to vanquish that area. <laughs> I loved I, I loved that entire quest line and area in Guild Wars One. Um, again, so like shadows of that in Guild Wars Two is the stuff I really enjoyed from Huning Study area. Does anyone else have anything else from Kessex Hills um, that they enjoyed or the Human Studying area that maybe I could chime in on? No. All right. No, oh, really. I mean, okay. It was, there, it, was, it was fun. Was <laughs> I mean, I just there's nothing really in, in oh, like, God, there's no one thing the that stands out to me. No. What? what? Oh, there was like this thing near the end of the beta. There was like this giant spaceship. Oh, we didn't talk about the beta ending. Oh, there was snap. this giant spaceship and it oh, came I, down. And, I wasn't like, there for one it. Of the... Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Was, was, I the, was I the only person who was there for the end of the beta? No. I, no, I was there. I, oh, you were there. Yeah. I wasn't. It was, it was interesting. It was cool. Uh, we might it was talk... better than the first one, I'll say We that. might talk about it next week. I had work. We'll probably talk about it next yeah. week. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it next week. With, with, we gotta. I, I, I want to get at least one more person up. who was there. Probably Tarkin. I'll, I'll probably get him on. Um, so yeah, aside from that, oh, Tarkin could awesome. talk about how fun that Ascalon Catacombs adventure was. <laughs> Indeed, um, Castle Hills was awesome. Char starting area was awesome with that giant stuff. Uh, everything else, I, I just really, I have to say that most of my time, even though I spent it in WVW, and I probably still think WVW is the reason I get Guild Wars 2. In fact, I'd probably buy Guild Wars 2 if I hadn't already just for WVW. Because um, I literally spent like 20 plus hours there, and I, and I just wanted more. Um, but PvE is really good in Guild Wars 2, guys. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. They fixed I melee. I was so happy. At least oh, for did, me. Did you, oh, did, they? did you feel much of a difference? I didn't feel too much like, of a difference. Yeah, like I, I went all... Um, dual pistols in the first beta, and I pretty much played all dual daggers in this beta. Oh wow! I thought it was much better. Cool. And this was the thief, right? Yeah. I actually thought, yeah, like I don't know. I sort of had a nice little build going where I had the um, the venom that applies poison, right. and the dual dagger skill, the number three slot, is like um, uh, leaping death blossom. So it's like an AOE that also applies three stacks of oh, bleeding. Wow. So I could just throw on that venom, aggro two or three things, use that um, skill twice. So I'll have poison on three enemies plus six stacks of bleeding Whoa, on okay, three wow. enemies. Cool. So by the time one of those things is dead, the other two are like half health. Nice. So, but yeah, that's, again, it was pretty it's, cool. it's amazing how good the the everyday like give us to the PVE works for two main reasons in my opinion. One, the dynamic event system I think is really cool. Sorry, three reasons. There's probably many more, but whatever. The Dying Set Event System is really cool. The second one, the art style and just the world itself and the world building is fucking amazing. Like, just again, like that one area, I can't believe it. I probably remember it for my entire Guild Wars 2 life. That area with the, the Tengu and all that stuff. Um, the, the diving place, the, the I still remember the chained castle of Galrath now and seeing it again in Guild Wars 2. Like, just the art style really kick, kicks ass. But the third one is combat in guild wars 2 even against ai enemies like just general pvp pve areas is really engaging like, I, I really love normal yeah it's actually pretty active yeah like, I, 
did you? I'm not sure how much you did. Did did you tend to do it solo or did you do, tend to uh, play PVE as a group? Um, I did it mostly solo. Like, I mean, not solo as it actively avoided other people. Just like I wasn't really grouped up a lot of the time. So did you feel? I felt this way. So. Did you feel that you can essentially? I feel like I feel like with, I feel like with uh, PVE, like there's there's really not much of a need to group up unless there's somebody that you are playing with, maybe from the guild or uh, a real life yeah, friend that's or something. The only time I did run up. together. There's no real need at yeah. all to, to group up with anybody. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like I did events with other people, but it wasn't a group. Yeah. Exactly. Just, we were just sort of all doing this event. Well, yeah, some so. areas, especially like dungeon areas, like those mini crypts I was talking about. Um, if you're not mm. grouped up and like coordinating together, you're gonna end up dying because there's a lot of different puzzles. Yeah, but that's it's not like it's not you're grouping up not to like so you can like share rewards. You're grouping up just because group chat is yeah. easier. Yeah. It's not really like you don't have to you can just use local chat. Yeah, there's there's really no need to, to go but like, I'm I'm you know I'm looking for looking for a group for this dynamic event. Like there's literally there's yeah. there's none of that. There's no reason again, like I said, no, unless you're running with somebody that you be. know or you're like you know, real life friend or a guild member or something and you're just wanting to keep track of each other easier on the mini map, there's no real other need to actually be in a group. Yeah, and, and the the and and I, back, I, by the way. But um the 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 oh. what I was trying to get out, get at was I felt that I could approach pretty much any situation in Guild Wars Two alone except for some very specific dynamic events, because it's it rewards playing well and the combat system really is on the die that you can essentially take on three veterans at once as it as any pretty much any class alone if you play it right three veterans oh i don't, I don't I know about take, that i could I could take three veterans as a warrior i i know a guardian that i've played with can take three veterans depending on what race i think uh good giants I'll say hit a bit, hard. bit squishy yeah it depends on how hard they hit but in general like you can take on really ridiculous circumstances alone by playing well and just like working to the combat system's strengths i, I just felt like Guild Wars 2 is really rewarding <laughs> both playing alone, yeah, like you. Uh, playing with skill and also doing things how you want to do them in that if you want to play alone and, and solo everything and use that uh, ability to play with skill to advance, you can do so. And, and again, you can visit higher level areas than you usually would um, because of the good combat system, because it allows you to do that. What, right. what are you guys' so, thoughts? So I spend most of my time in like higher leveled areas and I, I usually was playing alone. There are yeah. definitely certain areas that you cannot play alone. Like definitely, it is not a game for you to play alone the entire game. You're well, going to need help at some oh, point in the game. Really? Okay, that's, so that, that's actually um, surprising to me. Yeah, uh, the 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 mini dungeon that I did in uh, in the char area, I I tried to do it by myself and I had trouble. Wow. Okay. Like so, and, and yeah, not to it, meant, it was it was made for groups. And secondly, cool. that that leads to yeah, my area second in... thing is I'm hoping the problem is a lot of people are really spread out, and sometimes you don't come across people um, in areas that you might need help with. So right. I'm I just wonder how like you know it's not instance, but the server seems pretty empty for a full server. I mean, even in the beta, like people were really spread out. I mean, I was just walking around, and a lot of the times I was walking alone. I didn't come across other people. There was definitely a hot spot. I found there was hot spots. That was, yep. Yeah. It seemed like I areas felt, between like, dynamic events, I, I would agree with that, but anywhere you, where you were at uh, a dynamic event area, there was always people around that I saw. See, well, it depends. The like, hard hard quests, like, yes, but for uh, actual normal... Well, noob, noob, I think that... Go on. Noob, I think the problem with that is that I, the the level at which you were playing was probably quite a bit higher than the average level of most of no, the people. Yeah. Like level 28. Yeah, I that's, agree. That's, that's, yeah, that's higher, that's, that's higher yeah. than, oh. the, than the average. Yeah, I got the 28 and there wasn't a whole lot of people yeah. around. Like, if you yeah. like, I, I I like playing in the, in the like like lower 20s areas, there were tons of people. Yeah. It's just, I think I think that a lot of people are kind of being piecemeal. Yeah. They're, they're, they're grabbing Cont- like, like little bits of every everything about the game and they would just want to see like, okay, you know, maybe this weekend I'm going to focus on PvP or maybe today I'm going to focus on PVE, or the, I'm going to focus on the Norn starting here. I'm going to focus on the Char starting here. Yeah, exactly. Area. You're not getting a lot of people who are focusing on a single character and playing it as if the game was launched. Yeah. And so as you get higher into the content, you're getting further and further ahead of the curve. Yeah, that, that was the question I was going to ask. Like, what, what level yeah. did you find that really kicked in? But if, you, if it was around 28, then that makes sense. But did you find that um, things got harder as you leveled up and got to higher level areas, and you started having to have more people with you? Or did you... No. Uh, you, like, the comment you made was... Not... Um, not really. You felt that eventually you did need people with you, 
but that only makes sense because well, in the early areas the you can do area, like the specifically hard area, like the okay so yeah it, it didn't yeah, have to yeah, do with the level like, it had to do with the area the, the mini dungeon was the one exception right. that i that i had everything else i could do it on my anything own. with champions but of course, i can handle well but but of course i mean as long as i'm as long as i'm doing an event eventually people would come along and then i'd play with them right yeah, yeah cool so, so it wasn't a case where, in general, you you start you said um, that you eventually wanted to ha- you thought you needed other people there. That was for sp- very specific events, but most of the time you could just solo, like just to round things out. Would you agree? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. And does anyone else have anything to add? I think we'll do just the one last topic before ending it for the day. We'll talk about uh, more about WVW. We'll respond to anyone uh, who has any thoughts. Um, when it comes to my PvP statement, because I think already in the forums, there's a couple of people who have thoughts about that. Um, there's also people who want to know more about soloing in Guild Wars 2, so we'll, we'll touch upon that topic probably next week if it uh, remains a topic to be talked about. We just talked about, we talked it, about a bit. it a bit, but we could probably go a little bit more into it. Um, in case, we'll see. Whatever. Ne- next week and next week. I'll, I'll see if I even remember anything from this week next week. Um, but anyway, just to land out the show, I'm just going around the table here and uh, do favorite moment from this beta weekend. Um, I'll start with probably Durin. What was your favorite thing you did this weekend? You want, moment. I don't know if Durin's here. Do, do, Durin's not here? Oh, okay, I missed that. Shinboy? Oh, hold on. <laughs> think about this for a minute. I formulate my thoughts. Favorite moment. All right, hmm. I'll, I'll go through mine. I think, re- hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll give you mine was probably realizing that melee is viable. At least at nice. the point where I was at. Now, where was that? What, was, uh, so, where, what were you doing at the time? Uh, well, it was funny. I actually... Um, I, I mentioned a few weeks ago that I did a video about the trading yep. post, and in that video, I stupidly bought a really good dagger <laughs> for way more than I should nice, have bought it for. Right. <laughs> so when I started playing this weekend, I was like, well, shit, I paid all this money for this dagger. I might as well use right. it. And when I started using it, I found that dagger dagger was actually really nice. damn fun. Cool. I thought that was pretty cool. cool. That- and that was that was for the warrior. That was for was the uh, um, thief. thief. Yeah, I don't think warrior can use daggers. Thief. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a, my friend uh, played a thief that, I, and apparently he really liked it. Nice. So yeah. Uh, so Rawson, what was your favorite moment from this weekend? Uh, easily doing the world v world as part of the part of the big. Career. Nice. Well, I'm happy, I'm happy that you show. enjoyed that. You didn't play with us too much over yeah, the that next was, day. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it, no, I, I went back and played with someone who I usually play games right, with. Right, yeah. You should invite them over, because yeah. we'd be, obviously wouldn't mind more people in, in uh, the guild. But yeah, so anyway, so I'll, I'll aside from all of us as well, because I think we can touch more on that next week. What would you say was your best? I think that, that was, that was, <laughs> that was the, the big that one. That was the big um, one? Really? There wasn't anything else that really yeah, caught I, your fancy? Yeah, I, I, really, I really, that was, that was, that's sort of the, the highlight of that weekend nice. in my brain. Um yeah, I'll definitely touch on that a bit more next week. Yes. Uh, yeah, beyond that, like just being able to play the actual game just the way I, I, I play it. Nice. The way I play MMOs, and I, I feel like I'm not I'm not being restricted. Right. And being able, and w- when my friend went on with like a level three character, being able to jump back with him, and even though I'm like almost level twenty at this point. Being able to play with him and get gear for myself that was that was great. Yeah, realizing that you know that is how it works and it's a system that totally does work. Yeah, and it totally reinforces people playing together, people having fun together, helping out it's, people. It's the the, it's it's the craziest thing. It's a massively multiplayer game where you play with other. I people. know. What the hell? You, who what? Would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> New Verama. God damn. What was your favorite um, moment for this weekend? It's, it was um, it was Askalon Catacomb. I really had fun with that. No, fuck you, Arena Man. <laughs> fuck you. Um, no, it was it was looking at Durin's character's sexy panties in the uh, in the stream. That's kind of sad. Oh god, there are so many okay, sexy no, panties. No, no, in no it was stream. it was cooking. For some reason, I really enjoyed the cooking. Oh, that's I cool. Actually, say that was hey, these favorite. are some interesting picks for favorite moments. It, oh yeah, that's that's it, pretty cool. It's like just it's like a time sink I, I was just sitting there practicing buttons trying to figure out what cooking recipes i can do and then walking around collecting herbs and i'm like what the fuck am i doing this is not a cooking simulator <laughs> but it is now but it is now mama, so guild wars, wars 2 edition. i'm dropping everything else except cooking 
So um, yeah, you can <laughs> hit me up on my new restaurant that I'm opening up. In, uh, <laughs> oh, I wish you could. That'd be oh, cool. Nice. Can you sell? Can you sell uh, cooking stuff on? I'm mean, sorry, uh, fully made uh, stuff on the training post. Yep, they are you going can. for really yeah. low prices, like five. Oh, now, I can now merge you them just have for to... higher than I can for uh, trading them in the. Training. Right. Yeah, I ran into the same problem with um, jeweling. Like, since everyone was probably just trying it out. A lot of the basic stuff, the market was just saturated. Right, gotcha. So, oh. so uh, Duran, what was your favorite moment from the weekend? Not well versus well. We'll talk about next week. <laughs> uh, but what if it was kind of in well versus? Yeah, well? I know. I, I know. I know. I'm pretty sure See, I know that's the one. My you're same pull, problem. But it's a story it was, that I was... want to tell next week. So you told me the trebuchet. No, one, it right? was the, no, it no, it was the dungeon. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Like. Okay, that story's over. As, told. Yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to tell the story. But like, as punishing as the as the, through that, so you experience. seriously think that was your favorite moment? That's crazy. Yeah, because as, as as punishing as the dungeon was, and as much as I hated myself the entire time I was playing it, it, it was kind of you know the re- same reason why we play games like Super Meat Boy right. and because you're a masochist, Dark Souls and things. It's it's not it, maybe a little bit a little bit, but like it's more so as somebody who's played MMOs, you know, since at, at least since you know, Vanilla WoW. Like I've, I've been playing these games a lot. Um, through a lot of WoW, I was you know pr- a pretty heavy raider. Um, I I was never in one of those super serious guilds, never doing things like you know world firsts or things like that. Right. But so so to have something where I was able to accomplish something and and to have done so, what seems like you know one of the first people on the server to do it, like that was just a really really awesome nice. feeling. Cool. But, and again, I'm not gonna lie, I will never fucking do it again. Yeah, my, my follow-up question is: Would you recommend anyone else to do it? Though I wouldn't. <laughs> I just, I, if they if they do, I would recommend doing it immediately. If you're if you're doing it in a beta weekend event, do it as soon as it goes live. Like that's the first thing you do is just go straight into there and, yeah. and hope to God that your your side is the one controlling World be World. Yeah. Um, at launch again, do it when it first launches. If you don't. Then I would not recommend doing it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say because yeah, probably the same unless thing. you're running it, unless you're running in with like your full guild and your intention is to get to the very end of it, I could see that being kind of fun. Maybe yeah. if you have a guild full of masochists, <laughs> but <laughs> our guild trying to go it's in there all... by yourself and go do that absolutely. Oh yeah, like, in, in general, do that with other people, do like people you know. Yeah, we got extremely lucky being able to do that. And I actually I went back afterwards and I was so mad because. We decided to stop the stream right before we continued past that first room. So oh, none of it right. got recorded. Ouch. Okay, gotcha. Oh. gotcha. Well, it, we needed that because <laughs> you, um, the darkness room would just wouldn't have worked on the stream. True. Yeah. To, it's, yeah, to some extent. I mean, your UI is still on there, so it, yeah, that's true. Yeah, things would be on the screen, but <laughs> um, but yeah. No, anyway, so that's that's I would I would agree. Like, surprisingly enough. The curveball answer of my own, um, without if I'm not going to go into World vs. World, I'd say my favorite moments was, yes, that Tengu wall, but my second favorite is um, first entering the darkness area of the WBW dun- dungeon <laughs> and seeing everything just go black and knowing that I'm still playing Guild Wars 2, but suddenly feeling like some weird, like, um, 1995 hardcore PC game <laughs> where shit just got real <laughs> on me. Like die by the sword or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just feeling that moment. I can't believe was, Treyarch um, made that game. That my was... second favorite non WWE moment, even though it was in WWE, but I won't count. So those those are our picks. Um, does anyone else has anyone not done it? I think that's everyone. So we'll end the show there. Thanks for listening. It's been a long show. It's been about three, three hours or so. Three hours fifteen. Um, Can I plug oh, my yeah, restaurant? So, yeah, we'll, we'll start doing plugs. Uh, you can catch us on thelinkingcast at gmail.com if you want to give us any feedback or obviously the two posts. So I make them in the Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2 forums and uh, Guild Wars 2 Guru under explicit the Linking Cast um, in the community section. You can also follow us on Twitter at the Linking Cast. I am Sokovus Cynic signing out. Uh, Durin, do you have any plugs? I'll just go ahead and keep plugging my Twitch channel because yeah. it seems like people are enjoying watching it now. I'm actually getting more... Uh more of an audience lately oh, cool. um, so i'm going to continue the, the grimrock stuff and basically what my, my theme of it is is and this was an initially going to be the theme until somebody bought me grimrock <laughs> um is i'm basically wanting to play through a lot of these games that i have bought on steam and never played all right so i'm just using steam roulette to decide what my next game is going to be so oh, cool. once grimrock is done we're going to spin it again and see what the next game is nice and that's steam roulette you know, like, like was mentioned earlier uh it's twitch.tv slash cool 
Wait, is Steam Roulette like a thing, or is that just what you're calling? No, it? it's yeah, it's a website. Is that an actual thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's you basically cool. put your your Steam ID in, and it pulls up a whole your a whole list of games, and you can go through and remove some if you want to want to remove them because you know maybe you beat them already. Yeah, they're just not installed or. Yeah, you press a button, and then it'll actually scroll through them and randomly pick one out. Oh. Okay, it, that's it, cool. It, it just told me that. to play Fallout New Vegas. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was actually going to be uh, Fallout 3 before a friend gifted me Gr- Grimrock because he wanted me, s- me to play through that instead. Yeah, yeah, it's so. such, a, such a good game. But I'll, I'll do Shinboy next uh, because I know he has something to plug on like, the other two. Shinboy! Yeah, um, my site, plugandplaygaming.com. Uh, I mentioned before a video I did on the training post. Um, we just put our all our E3 thoughts. Oh, cool. Um, in summary, Microsoft sucked. <laughs> So. I, in summary, for me, both so, both <laughs> Nintendo and Microsoft sucked. That, that's my. Well, see, I didn't watch the Nintendo no, one. So, in like, summary, for me, all of it just fucking terrible. Ubisoft was good. Ubisoft was uh, good. Anyway, Ubi- Ubisoft no, was bad was good games. But... Ubisoft was was king of shit mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs awesome. looked awesome. Okay, yeah, I guess, I guess that's Watch the ending the... statement. Star Wars thirteen thirteen and Watch Dogs looked awesome. And everything else was relatively disappointing. They were all both. They were both. No, 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 no. We had Assassin's Creed. 3 oh yeah, well. oh, that looked amazing. Anyway, let's not get D three mm. too much. Okay. Yeah, let's um, not get into that. So plug and play we gaming. Entire... Com, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> yep, yep. And Steam Roulette is telling me to play Dungeon Defenders. So if anyone wants to hit me up <laughs> and play Dungeon Defenders. Just uh, search my Steam ID, which is Shinboy. And- All right, let's get to the uh, losers of the team. Sh- is- Rawson, do you have anything to plug? <laughs> uh, not this week, but coming up soon. I got something in the pipe. Ooh, fancy. Sounds like you're constipated. <laughs> I, well, I, I do kind of have to go poop, but that's... Let's that's neither that here nor there. N- New Barama, you need the plug? No. Um, I like to plug my restaurant I'm opening up in Divinity's Reach. It's called La Cuisine. It's a high-class restaurant. And I'm accepting, now, like, uh, what is it called? Reservations at one gold per seat. Yeah. What, he- what he- you he should do is you should, you should set up the restaurant in Ultima Online, but you serve the food in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> that, way, that way you have a virtual presence. Right. Also, you should set up another restaurant in Second Life. Yeah, I was going to say, Second Life. That, that. <laughs> that, that way I can go in while dressed up as my badger fursona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And no restaurant ship. That is it for the week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that was the Lincoln cast. Uh, I forgot what episode. This is like episode eight. Sand. So um, that's that's all. Uh, catch us next week for more uh, beta impressions or and news if there is any. We'll definitely get touch on WVW then. But uh, until then, goodbye. Good night. Bye. Bye.